Roswell Media Sports. Welcome in to Kosciuszko Whippets Baseball here from Boswell Media Sports on a great, great Saturday afternoon. It's the Whippets taking on the Choctaw County Chargers. And we jumped on the air very quickly because uh, first up, we have a special recognition uh, going on as the 1974 state championship team is being honored on the field. And uh, this is a 50th year, 50th year celebration since the team won the state championship. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, turn over the field mic and get the PA going and you can probably hear uh, everything that's going on there and then we'll get into our pregame but for now we're going to take a trip back in time to 1974. As of right now we hope we change it this year this is the only state title won in Kosciuszko history. A um, couple of things that stood out that day. Kerry Howell went the distance on the mound. Uh, Gary Taylor made the infamous triple play. Uh, and the Whippets finished with a 17-2 and two record. I'd like to introduce you today to a few of these guys. The team was made up of Kerry Howell, Benny Steams, Tommy Thompson, Gary Taylor, Danny Howell, Richard Bell, James Culpepper, Buddy Shoemaker, Paul Woods, Randy Holloway, Larry Burton, Larry Harmon, Ken Holmes, Ricky Kane, Tony Collins, Jimmy Cockroft, and Mike Caldwell. The managers for this team were Pindy Ellen and Mike Steen. The head coach of the Kosciuszko Whippets in the 1974 state champions was Coach Ted Milton. He was assisted by Art Nestor. Today we have another special guest, you may know him. Uh, he kind of helped get things started on the other field across the way. I hope we hit a couple of balls on that field today. Coach Ricky Joe Black is here today as well. <laughs> Guys, I know it's been 50 years, but I was fortunate enough to get close to playing for a couple of these. The ladies on top of the hill have won a couple of these or three of these are for our softball team but this is an outstanding accomplishment and still the only one in Kosciuszko baseball history. The 1974 Class A state champions. Welcome them guys. Thank you very much. There it is, the 1974 state championship team back in Kosciuszko uh, 1A, so a 1A squad, Class A uh, champion. They defeated Poplarville two games to none back then. They played those games home and away, so they played game one here, game two on the road down in Poplarville, and so they were – the only state championship in program history. 17 and two is what the team finished. So they're all being gathered there at uh, right between home plate and the pitcher's mound. If you're watching the stream, you can see them uh, there on the uh, the video stream. And we'll continue with our pregame coverage here with the premier medical pregame show. And it is Kosciuszko Whippets. Uh, baseball here from uh, Land, not, not Landrum Field, the <laughs> Landrum Field right over across the way there, the uh, uh, Tallah County Fairgrounds, and we'll get you the starting lineups. Let's just turn it back over to the PA. Lawson Stevens. Lawson Stevens starting things up for the Choctaw Number County three. Chargers. Jeremiah Miller. Jeremiah Miller. Batting third. Number 11, Seth Miller. Seth Miller, bat third, he'll play second base. Caleb McCulloch, he'll bat fourth, play third base. Jonathan Ricardo will bat fifth, play first base. Batting sixth will be the catcher, Tate Miller. On the mound for the Chargers, Brendan Talano. Jalen James will bat eighth, play left field. number five. Jack Hood will bat ninth and play shortstop. And in right field, it will be Moss Bruce, who's in the batting lineup, or excuse me, in the fielding lineup, but not in the batting lineup. 
So those are your starters for the Choctaw County Chargers. Now we'll get ready for the starters for the Kosciuszko Whippets. And my book is going to be a little bit different. We had a change in the lineup now, right Kaziusko up until Whippets, we went on the air. So I'm going to have to hear Andrew it just Mansell. like you are. Andrew Mansell Andrew batting second, first play in center first, field. Number one, Braxton Smith. Braxton Smith will batting bat third, second play first. Catcher, number seven, Barrett Kewen. Barrett Kewen, he'll bat Three third play catcher. Bailey. The cleanup, number 15, Bailey Powers. Bailey Powers will bat fourth. Fifth, will be the, the pitcher, DH. 22, Holden McGee. Batting fifth will be batting the pitcher, Holden sixth, McGee. The third baseman, number 25, Aiden Howard. Aiden Howard will bat sixth, play third. Stop, number six, batting next, Ryan Tillman. Ryan Tillman will bat seventh, play shortstop. John Wyatt Rusco. John Wyatt Rusco will bat batting eighth, eight, play left five, field. Braden Rigby. Braden Rigby will bat ninth and, and play right second field, base. Number 10, Reggie and Carter. Reggie Carter will be in the field, but not in the batting order. So those are your starting lineups. Those are brought to you by Holmes Community College, and we will step aside for our prayer and our national anthem. We're back momentarily with more Basel Media Sports baseball right after this. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Flu shots are now available at all Premier Medical Group locations for infants six months through adults. Come in today and get your flu shot. Just walk in and they will see you shortly. Flu shots are now available ages six months and up. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko, Carthage, and Holmes Community College in Goodman and Trace Urgent Care. Premier Medical Group, PMG, good health is our priority. Boswell Media Sports. And welcome back in the Kosciuszko Whippets Baseball here from Boswell Media Sports. Kind of a crazy start to our afternoon, but we do have a very nice afternoon for baseball. As I said, we didn't, didn't really get a lot to, to talk about with the uh, recognition of the 1974 state championship team and uh, uh, the change in the lineup. I mean, literally right before we went on there, we had our graphics ready to go. We had our books all put together, and we got word that there was a change in Kosciuszko's line. Up. So when I called the lineups out, that was the first time I had heard the new lineup as well. But, you know, that is wont to happen here in high school baseball or any level of baseball. But uh, today is a beautiful day for baseball. I'll give you the Italian County Co-op field conditions. Field looks great considering the amount of rain we got last night here in Kosciuszko. So they pushed the games back to a couple of hours because of that rain. Let the wind and the sunshine, uh, you know, help dry it up a little bit there's still some kind of soggy places deep in the hole at shortstop and then down the in the uh, the right field corner there you'll see some soggy places but about as well as you could expect and then let's see 63 degrees right now got a pretty good wind about a 10 mile an hour wind coming straight out of the north expect 19 mile an hour wind gusts so that could play tricks 
with those balls that get up in the air. And that's your Talent County Co-op field conditions and weather report. So we're ready to roll here as the Kosciuszko Whippets take on the Choctaw County Chargers. They didn't have to come too far, just right up the road from Ackerman. And uh, they are going with the blue tops with the white pants, the pinstripes, the white county written across the chest and the white uh, numerals kind of have a real Auburn look, if you want to call it that. Like when I saw them out there on the field, it kind of gave me a, a reminder of the Auburn Tigers. The Whippets are going with the white tops, maroon pants. They have the Whippets written in maroon. They have a white helmet with, I mean, white hat with a maroon K and a maroon bill. On the mound for the Whippets will be the sophomore Holden McGee. Trying to give you some stats on Holden McGee. Like I said, we are just now kind of hopping into everything as it was all. A lot to go with here be uh, before the game. So, a little rock and roll here as we're just kind of waiting for the uh, officials and coaches meetings. It kind of got pushed to the wayside after the uh, recognition in the national anthem and the starting lineups and 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 all of that. So, Coach Cole McBride is meeting with head coach Ben Tillman in his third season with the Choctaw County Chargers. Choctaw County 5-10 and 10 is assistant coach Ryan Smith. Last year, the Chargers were 15-11, 6-2 in the division. They made it all the way to the second round of the playoffs where they lost to East Union, who I think has uh, m quite possibly the best mascot in the state, the East Union Urchins. The Kosciuszko Whippets come into today's game 8-5. After the last the last time we were on air with you was that game two against Houston that the Whippets got the win down at Holmes Community College. Since then they've gone two and one. They ten to eight game over Cleveland Central and a four to three win over Bio Academy, and then they lost five to three to Eupora a little bit earlier this week. So I think we might have got you pretty much caught up there on the tail of the tape from both squads as we're getting ready for baseball. Settle in and. Enjoy as Holden McGee winds and delivers to the leadoff batter who sends a little chopper uh, blooper over to second base. Rigby tried to go up and get it, couldn't bring it down. And that's going to be probably an error. Yeah, that one kind of carried on Rigby a little bit. He just tried to go up and, and, and grab it, and it just kind of kept going. So Lawson Stevens. Reaches first base. Going to bring up Jeremiah Miller. Jeremiah Miller swings at the first pitch, and it's fouled off. This first pitch swinging a couple of times there. Aggressive approach from the Chargers. First innings for Whippets Baseball, brought to you by Pickles Drug Store. A one two pitch, swinging foul ball back across in front of the netting here. 0 oh 2 the count. Trying to set the defense for you. After this, as I said, there was a lot of moving parts. Things got moved around. We had to redo some our book and some of our graphics and papers here. McGee from the stretch. There's another pitch that's fouled off. Got Holden McGee on the mound. Barrett Kewen behind the plate at the corners. It's Braxton Smith at first. Aiden Howard at third base up the middle. It's Tillman at short and Rigby at second base. We'll give you the outfield following this pitch. And the, Jeremiah Miller has swung at everything that's been thrown at him, and he's fouled all four of those pitches off. Outfield is where we had the change. You had John White Rusco, who was originally scheduled to play, or set to play right field, is in left field. Andrew Mansell was set to play left field, moved to center field. And Reggie Carter was not in the lineup, but now he is playing right field. So it goes Rusco, Mansell, and Carter left to right. Benny Powell not in the starting lineup. We had him batting third and playing center field. And as, if you follow Whippet uh, Baseball, you know, he's the leading hitter on the team. McGee, another pitch, another foul ball. 
Jeremiah Miller swinging at everything. Well, yeah, Powell, I'm not sure if something happened in the pregame warm-ups or something, but he's not in the – was taken out of the lineup after it was sent up here to the press box. So hopefully everything's okay with Powell. There's a curveball that's going to be blooped into left field. A diving stop by John Wyatt Rusco. Great play in the outfield. That ball almost got down in front of him, but kept it in and probably kept the runner from getting over to third. A good play there by Rusco. One down in the inning. That'll bring up Seth Miller. We got three Millers in the lineup for this Choctaw County squad. It's the first pitch today that has not been swung at, and it was off the plate for a ball. No score. We're at top of the first inning from Kosciuszko on a windy but pretty Saturday afternoon. Wind starting to blow in a little bit from center field. Ball hit high in the air, right field. Rigby running on. Now Carter's going to call him off and make the catch and keep his balance. All right, wind's playing tricks with the ball. Reggie Carter had to run a long way for that one. Kind of got off balance there, but able to pull it down. And that's two outs in the inning. Runner on first base. And Caleb McCulloch, the third baseman, coming to the plate. Let's see, McCulloch is a senior. Some of these guys on the roster have their classifications. Some don't, so you kind of just have to look and see what you have there. Curveball stays up and in. Ball one. Taking his time, checked the runner at first. Hard hit ball, left field. Rusco going back, and he's not going to get to it. That one hit on the nose, and McCulloch gives the Chargers a lead with the two run home run. Yeah, I didn't think off the bat. I wasn't sure if it was gone. I knew it was well hit, but just kept carrying and got over that 345 sign out there in left center field and landed right there behind the football bleachers. That'll make it two to nothing. Clears the bases for Jonathan Ricardo. Ricardo. Another senior on this squad. First pitch swinging is fouled off. Pretty good crowd. Made the trip over from Ackerman. You know, not too far, 25, 30 minutes. Right up Highway 12. Next pitch comes in and hits it, Ricardo. So it'll be a two out base runner for. The Chargers and the third of the three Millers in the lineup will come to the plate. Tate the Miller. catcher, Tate Miller. He is a junior. Pitch right down the middle for strike one. Pitch there by McGee. Definitely needed that one. There's one hit into center field. Man sailed and have to move too far. A couple steps to his left, and he'll make the catch for the final out. But the Chargers, they get two runs on one hit. There was one error and one left on base. Uh, we'll go to the bottom of the first inning. Choctaw County leads it 2 to nothing over Kosciuszko. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. 
So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. Boswell Media Sports. And welcome back to the Italian County Fairgrounds. The Choctaw County Chargers put up two. A two spot on a two-run home run by Caleb McCulloch. And they lead it two to nothing as the Whippets will get set to uh, get their first turns at bat here on uh, the afternoon. Andrew Mansell, Braxton Smith, and Barrett Kewen do up for the Whippets. Let's see. We might be able to give you some stats here if we can get this working. All right. So, yeah. Andrew Mansell will lead things off. The Whippets center fielder. Let's see. He comes in batting in at 290. He's got one double, five runs driven in, five runs scored. He's walked four times. So, yeah, after the the basketball season, the Whippets senior, and then getting back into the swing of things, pun intended, and he has uh, found himself at the leadoff spot. On the mound for the Chargers. Brooks Talano, don't have any stats on him. Just a just a right-hander, and about all I can tell you right here. So, sats are hard to come by these days. Uh, some teams put them behind a, behind a paywall, behind a different other things that you can't necessarily just get on the internet and find them unless you're an admin or for the team or something along those lines. So we just have to go with what we have. But <clears throat> there we go. Andrew Mansell stepping in. To the plate, the Whippet center fielder, and hey, you watch him. Mansell's not afraid to try to butt and get on, and that's what he shows right there. Is the little slow curveball stays inside for ball one. Yeah, Mansell, he'll he'll bunt for a base hit. That big six 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 seven frame of his doesn't take too long to get down the base paths. Another breaking ball that stays up for ball two. First innings for Whippets Baseball brought to you by Pickles Drugstore. Pitch low off the plate, ball three. Three balls, no strikes to count to the Whippets leadoff batter. Walked them on four straight. Whippets get a leadoff walk. And it'll be Braxton Smith coming to the plate. Whippets on a speedy runner over at first. Mansell. He is speedy. Mansell has seven stolen bases on the season. Inching over to the right. He's gone. Ball's in the dirt. And sliding in safely face first was Mansell out at second base. But Smith watched it in the dirt. Braxton Smith, a 205 hitter on the season. Now with a runner in scoring position. Smith lays down a bunt. Tolano is the only one that can play it and throws to first and gets the runner out as there was sort of a collision at first base. Seth Miller coming over to guard or cover the bag at first. Kind of got a little bit off balance and Smith and him collided at first, but it goes down as the sack bunt. And Barrett Kewitt, the Whippets catcher, will come to the plate. Mansell's able to get all the way over to third. Kewitt hits one deep left field. 
It's James that's going to camp out under it. Mansell's going to be able to tag up and come home. So the Whippets get one of those runs back. Back-to-back -back sacrifices. Have the Whippets on the board. Two to one. Two outs now in the inning, and Bailey Powers, the Whippets designated hitter, stepping in. He'll look at ball one off the plate outside. One ball two. So two to one. Choctaw County in the lead. Bottom of the first inning. That's an another breaking ball kind of stayed up. Three balls and no strikes. We count to Bailey Powers. There's ball four, and it's a two-out walk. With Holden McGee, the Whippets pitcher, coming to the plate. Holden McGee, sophomore. McGee, a little banged up as the pitch is behind McGee out of the zone for ball one. Yeah, McGee missed a couple of games there. Banged up, sickness, other things. Just trying to get back into it. Ball is in the dirt. P Powers was stealing all the way. Throw from Tate Miller goes down to Hood, and it's well late, but I believe Powers was stealing all the way there. Even after the pitch was in the dirt. But now I got a runner in scoring position to the Whippets. There's ball hit to the left side. They're going to hold Powers at third as the throw came home. And McGee will end up at second base on the throw. So the Whippets have two runners in scoring position. As it, initially, it initially looked like Coach McBride was going to send Powers home, but a good defensive play by James out in left field. He came up and really got the ball and got it in quickly. So it goes down as a single for McGee. Oh. The breaking ball comes back and finds the inside corner for a strike one. That's Aiden Howard, the Whippets third baseman, sophomore, digs in at the plate, the first lefty to come up in the Whippet lineup. Swings, and I think he might have caught a little piece of it. It sounded like maybe he got a tip. Aiden Howard. Do some pitching if the Whippets need him to. Pitches out, out of the zone and it rolls away from Tate Miller, but Powers stays down at third base. One ball, two strikes to count. Two and one, or two, two, one is the score with the Chargers, the early lead here in the top or the bottom of the first inning. That pitch bounces in the dirt. Even the count up at two balls and two strikes. Well, let's see, it's Ryan Tillman with the shortstop on deck. If Howard could get it, got a piece of it, but it fell right into the glove of Tate Miller, and that will end the inning on strikes. But the Whippets were able to get one run on what, one hit. No errors and nobody or two left on base. Played one complete. Choctaw County leads it two to one. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency in Kosciuszko, knowing the customer and their individual needs is what we pride ourselves on. 
We know how important it is for everyone to have the peace of mind that your insurance coverages are tailored for you. Our team recognizes your life and your unique needs. That is why we provide you with numerous insurance options, an easy claim process, and personal attention that is second to none, all at one location without breaking the bank. Call us today at 662-289-1024 or visit us at 235 North Madison Street off the square in Kosciuszko. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency, we guarantee the right fit for you and all of your insurance needs. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the second inning. It's two to one. Kosciuszko trails Choctaw County Chargers. Stepping in will be Brendan Tolano. And he fouls one off. He's the pitcher. Bats from the left side. So it'll be eight, nine, or excuse me, seven, eight, nine in the lineup. So Jalen James and then Jack Hood will step in. The pitches in the dirt for ball one, making the count even. Second innings for Whippets Baseball brought to you by Kangaroo Crossing. A couple of locations here in Kosciuszko. Tolano fouls that one off down the right side towards the Choctaw County dugout. Pitches high and out of the zone for ball two. Even the count up. McGee winds and delivers. A little chopper to first base. Braxton Smith gets it off one hop. Touches the bag for the out. Out number one. Now batting number four, Jalen Jones. Excuse me, James. So it will be the left fielder, Jalen James, stepping into the plate. James, a senior for Coach Tillman, another Left-handed batter, the second straight in the lineup. McGee's pitch to him is low and outside, ball one. Wind shifted and blowing in from dead center field. That ball's rocketed down the third baseline, past the diving Aiden Howard, and it's out for left field for a base hit. Well, that was one over there at the hot corner. Howard was playing a little... Off the line, if he's playing a little bit closer, probably knocked that one down, but that one was just past his glove, and it'll be a one-out single, and it is Jack Hood, the shortstop, coming to the plate. Jack Hood is a junior. Pickoff attempt over to first base, and it is James back in in plenty of time. He'll check the runner and a throw to the plate. Fast ball outside corner called strike. Good looking pitch there from McGee. Next week, the Whippets are going back to division play. A couple of games against their rivals, the Louisville Wildcats. Runner takes off. There's the throw down, and it's going to get into center field, but Tolano, or excuse me, James not able to advance. Kewen had a shot at him, but he, the, the switch over. When he popped up, he couldn't get the ball out of his uh, glove into his throwing hand. Otherwise, that would have been a bang-bang play down at second base. But as it is, it's a stolen base. Runner in scoring position for Choctaw County. Could try to extend their lead. Two to one. Got a swinging strike, too. Got him to chase one out of the zone. One ball, two strikes the count to Hood. Go back to the top of the order and Lawson Stevens after this. That Tillman kind of holding the runner on out at second base. McGee will take a look back. He'll throw to the plate. Popped up, but foul. Over toward the softball field. Whip it softball team in action today. Dropped one earlier to Northwest Rankin. 
And they'll play DeSoto Central. I believe either they might be playing right now or they might play a little bit later. I have to get that. I'm not sure how quickly after that first game they were going to turn around and play game two. Fastball high, even just a count of two and two. And Northwest Rankin softball, the number one team in the state. Last night, look, they were top ten team in the country. What do you whip it sound? The work cut out for them down there in Flowood today. There's a curveball that Hood's able to catch a piece of and send it foul. The count will remain two balls and two strikes. Our streams today are brought to you by Allen's Furniture. You can listen in on the Breezy 101 app or listen live tab at breezynews.com or the video stream that's available at the Basel Media YouTube channel. Fastball low and in. Run the count full. You can bring us up on your smart TV. Just go to YouTube, search Boswell Media. And a live video should be the first one that pops up. 3-2 pitch. It's fouled right back here into the netting. Yeah, day like today. If you couldn't make it out to the ballpark, Today's a good day if you had an outside TV, you know, maybe on a, on a patio or something. Bring us up on your smart TV, sit outside. Maybe you have two TVs. You have one for Marsh Madness and one for Whippets Baseball. I'm sure you've probably got plenty of screens. You've got iPads and phones and every kind of screen that you could put any kind of sport on. Payoff pitch, swing and strike three. Got him to chase the high fastball. Strikeouts brought to you by Tally County Farm Bureau. Go back to the top of the order. Two down in the inning now. Lawson Stevens reached on an error and then scored. Came around to score on that home run from Caleb McCulloch. He swung at the first pitch last time. See if his MO is the same. And he did. Tried to do the uh, tried to check the swing, but he went around. It was that high fastball again. McGee, take a look back at second Tillman covering the bag. There's a breaking ball stayed up and in. One and one the count. Yeah, Whippets going on the road next week on Tuesday to take on the Wildcats. And then it's a Tuesday-Thursday situation next week because of Good Friday. Next week is Easter. So whenever that happens, you have Tuesday-Thursday rather than a Tuesday-Friday. Down the line, Howard plays it at the line. Going to be a long throw across. Pulls Smith off the bag, so he'll have to tag the runner, which he does. So that was a good play by Howard and by... Smith over at first. Uh, the Chargers go down. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning. Whippets are trailing at two to one. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto, which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise. A promise to take care of the ones you love no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Two to one as we start the bottom of the second inning. Choctaw County leads Kosciuszko. 
It will be Ryan Tillman to lead things off for the Whippets. So it will be 7, 8, and 9 due up. Looks at ball one. Second innings for Whippets baseball presented by Kangaroo Crossing. Ball two and outside. Brooks Tolano still on the mound for the Choctaw County Chargers. We do have an update for you from Flowood. As Tillman looks at ball three. Kosciuszko Lady Whippets are up one to nothing on DeSoto Central in that second game of that tournament that they're playing there in Flowood. Ball four for the second straight inning. Whippets get a leadoff walk. So that'll bring up John Wyatt Rusco to the plate. Now batting the left fielder, number 27, John Wyatt Rusco. Rusco playing left field. And he is a lefty. Second one in the lineup. Whippets have Tillman over at first. A little bit of speed. And obviously we know the Whippets are pretty aggressive on the base paths. First pitch swinging. Rusco can't figure it out a little. Not a lot on that one. Let's see. Give me, a, let me give you some stats for Rusco. Pitch well out of the zone outside for ball one. Even the count up. Two to one. Gonziesco trailing Choctaw County. Rusco, another one of those guys kind of. Trying to get back into the groove after missing a couple of games. Uh, illness, injury. Pitch comes right down the middle for strike two. That, that wind once again shifted and is blowing in. Dead from center field. Right about 10, 11 miles an hour. The curve ball comes in and hits him off the hip. Whippets will have runners on first and second. Very good hit by a pitch. I guess curveball is probably the one you want. You know, you don't want the fastball. Braden Rigby, the freshman, will step into the plate. Just play at second base today. So now the infield is going to come in as Rigby shows butt. He pulls it back because it was up around high level. Uh, so the infield's coming. Well, at least the first baseman, Ricardo's kind of coming in. McCulloch still kind of playing back at his normal depth over at third. Oh. It's going to play a little small ball. Rigby once again pulls it back as the pitch was low. Two, is two balls, no strikes to count. Rigby will get the call from Coach McBride. Shows fun again. Comes up about eye level for ball three. Three balls, no strikes to count. If you'd probably show, let Rigby show Bunn again here. I think he would worry about trying to lay one down now with the 3-0 count. Tolano does come in and find a strike on the inside corner for strike one. Three one count, runners on first and second. Rigby at the plate. He's gonna watch the curveball go out of the zone for ball four. So it'll be loaded for the Whippets leadoff batter, Andrew Mansell. And we're gonna have a visit to the mound. Oh walk out there. Talk to his pitcher, Brooks Tolano, as the Whippets have him loaded with nobody out. Perfect opportunity for Whippets to tie or take the lead with the top of the order. Coming back up, Andrew Mansell walked to start the game. Ended up coming around to score after the Whippets were able to put together a couple of sacrifices. You had Braxton Smith lay down a sack bunt, and then Baird Kewen with the sack fly out to left field. So that's where the Whippets got their one run. Choctaw County got their two runs on a McCulloch home run. Now batting 
center fielder, number 13, Andrew Mansell. Just finished with the meeting at the mound, and it looks like Talano is still going to pitch from the stretch despite the bases being loaded. Fast ball, outside corner called strike one. You still got Ricardo at first kind of playing in. You got a stoppage here as Tayton Miller is looking over to the dugout. Some, some confusion on the pitch calls. Curveball stays in, ball one, even a, the count up. So you got Rigby at first, Rusko at second. Hard hit ball into center field. Jeremiah Miller going to come on, make the catch. Tagging at third base and coming home is Ryan Tillman to tie the ball game. No, it's an out, but the Whippets are able to tie it up. Exactly what you needed if you were Kosciuszko. Braxton Smith. Braxton Smith will come to the plate. Smith, we just told you, laid down a sack bunt on his first at bat. Tolano will look the runner, Rusko, back at second base. The runner's on first and second, tied up at two now. Whoop, it still have a pretty good chance to take the lead as that pitch finds the outside corner for strike one. Big leads for both the Whippet runners. The pitch comes inside, even the counted ball, and a strike. Got some rhythmic applause from over in the Whippets dugout at the third base side. Long look back at second. Rusko will take a step back to second. Fast ball stays off the plate. And low for ball two. Two balls, one strike. The count to Braxton Smith. Bottom of the second inning, tied at two. The ball's going to get past the catcher, Miller, and everybody's going to be able to move up a base. Go down as a wild pitch. It was well outside in the other batter's box. 3-1 the count now. Runners on second and third. He's got the heart of the order here at the plate. Smith swung and won a little, little bit up in the zone, caught a piece of it, foul it off back into the screen behind home plate to run the count full. As the wind continues to pick up. I imagine you can hear it on our field mics there. On a long look at third base where John White Rusko is leading off the bag. Pitch is low for ball four. And missed by much. That is the third walk issued in the inning. It will draw a visit to the mound. And I would assume a pitching change would be coming. We're going to have a pitching change timeout. So while we get that ready to go, we'll step aside for a break. Bases are loaded with Baird Kewen, which number three hitter, coming to the plate, taking a timeout for a pitching change. Mornings at Wendy's are pretty sweet. Our homestyle French toast sticks, honey butter chicken biscuit, or maple bacon chicken croissant are so much more than just savory. That sweet, sweet syrup, perfect for dipping or drizzling. And that sweet honey butter, oh, it's that kind of breakfast. With our homestyle French toast sticks, honey butter chicken biscuit, or maple bacon chicken croissant, waking up has never been sweeter. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Breakfast. At participating U.S. Wendy's during breakfast hours. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. 
Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson or Bradley Tyler at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Central Tire Service pitching change time out, and we had a lefty coming in, and uh, still some confusion among us here in the press box on who exactly that might be, as none of our rosters have a number eight on them. So we will have to kind of wait and see, but to uh, set the scene for you. Bases are loaded. We're tied at two, bottom of the second inning, only one out, and the Whippets will send Barrett Kewen to the plate. So we're just going to try to wait and see uh, who Choctaw County, yeah. With none of the rosters had a number eight on them, and we will see if there are any defensive changes. Let's see. While batting the catcher, number seven, Barrett Kewen. Yeah, I don't think there were any defensive changes we needed to note, unless that is Tolano at second base, which I think it might be. Anyway, Brooks Barrett Kewen comes in, looks at strike one. So. Whippets, Whippets have a little bit of a different look here at the lefty, working from the sh wind up. Kewen can't figure out that one. A little bit elevated fastball. Quickly, new pitcher. Got an 0-2 count to one of the Whippets' best hitters. Well, went in the dirt, blocked up nicely by Tate and Miller. Otherwise, Rusko probably could have come home on that one. Last time Kewen was at the plate, he sacrificed fly. Hit, hit ball hard out to left field. Well, that's a called strike three on the outside corner. It's the second whip it to go down swinging. And Bailey Powers, the whip it's DH, will come to the plate. 15, Bailey Powers. Hard hit ball down the left field line, drifting foul. That one a little to the left of the foul pull. Just a, went over the top of the Whippets' new locker room. Used to the former Whippet football locker room. Pitch up and out, ball one to even the count up. Power swings, fouls that one off towards the softball field. Hard hit ball, right side, couple of guys going out. It's Tolano that'll call off everybody and make the catch from second base. Well, the Whippets are able to tie the game. Leave the bases loaded. They get one run on no hits. And there were no errors and three left on base. Through two complete innings, we're tied at two. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Itala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. 
Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served to you daily at the drive-thru at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive-thru. Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Memorial Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the third inning and it will be two, three, and four due to come to the plate for the Choctaw County Chargers. We're tied up at two. Third innings for Whippets Baseball brought to you by Renaissance Insurance. It's Jeremiah Miller stepping in. Miller was robbed of a base hit back at his first appearance on a diving catch by John White Rusko. One time he looks at strike one. It's the first time he has not swung. He swung at everything that was thrown on the plate. He placed a seven-pitch at bat, and he swung at all of them. That one's hit to third base. Aiden Howard gets it, throws across for the out. Well, one quick out here in the top of the third inning. It's still holding McGee on the mound for the Whippets. Seth Miller comes to the plate. Now, he was playing second base. Not sure where they got him playing now unless he just went to a, a DH or something. This, the pitcher's low for ball one. Yeah, he was playing second and Brooks Tolano went off the mound and went to second. So, pitches in the dirt for ball two. Pitches high above eye level ball three. That was pitch number 41 for McGee here in the afternoon. Fastball finds its mark right down the middle for strike one. You don't want anybody on base for McCulloch. He's coming, he's swinging it on deck circle. He's the reason the Chargers have the two runs as that one's low and outside for ball four. That's the first walk issued by Holden McGee and Caleb McCulloch stepping in. McCulloch hit the two-run bomb over the le left center field wall back in the first inning. Um, Chargers have Miller over at first with a decent lead. McGee working from the stretch now. Takes off. Here's the throw down. Miller's in there safe. Straight steal all the way. Pitch was low in the dirt. Ball one. McGee and Kewen kind of taking a long time to go through the signals there as McCulloch -ish calls for time. Once again, McGee and Kewen taking a long time to get the shine down, and now here's the pitch. Blocked up nicely by Hewen balls in the dirt, skipped to home plate. Two balls, no strikes to count to Caleb McCulloch. Choctaw County. A 3A squad. Right up the road, pitch low, ball three. 3-0 three -oh the count.
You know, the Chargers made it to I think the third round of the basketball playoffs at the at Wamba, I believe. Ended up falling to Cahoma County. And McGee able to come back and find the strike zone. 3-1. Same MO that happened in the the, the previous batter Miller. Got down 3-0. We came back, found a fastball strike, and unable to close him out. Let's see if McGee can find a way to Put down McCulloch. This will be a chopper to third base. One hop for Howard to throw. They get him at first, and Miller's going over to third, and he'll advance. But we'll let's get the lead runner. Two down in the inning. But go ahead, run. He's 90 feet away. Jonathan Ricardo stepping in, the Choctaw County first baseman. He was hit by a pitch back in the first inning. First pitch hit down the line. It's going to be foul. First pitch swinging just foul down the third baseline. Would have been trouble for the Whippets. Oh, County really been hugging that line. Now you're going to see Aiden Howard move a little bit closer to the line. They've had a couple of you know, one hit get down that line earlier in the game. Howard's had a few putouts here, so he earned his keep over at the hot corner. That one's right back up the middle. Good piece of hitting. He's going to bring the run home. And the Chargers take the lead. Yeah, just goes right over the bag at second base. Ricardo's got the RBI. Miller comes home to score. And it's three to two. Let's see. Seth Miller comes home to score. Tate Miller, the catcher, steps in. Tate Miller. Gonna fly ball out to center field his last at bat. Keith checks the runner at first. First pitch swinging, it's a foul ball. Off to our right. <coughs> McGee delivers, that one's gonna be hit into shallow. Right field, Braden Rigby will step back into the grass and make the catch. In the side is retired, but the Chargers take the lead. They get one run on one hit. There were no errors and one left on base. To the bottom of the third inning, the Chargers lead the Whippets 3-2. to two. When handling your finances, trust the expert staff at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan, Tammy Irving, and staff are here to help their clients achieve financial success and ease your mind when it comes to financial questions for business and personal. Watkins Ward and Stafford offers QuickBooks online hosting solutions, payroll, and direct deposits. Watkins Ward and Stafford, leading our clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street, Kosciuszko. This is physical therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapist Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden. Transforming lives spiritually and physically. Reliant Physical Therapy in Meg's Plaza on Veterans Memorial Drive, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. <laughs> Chargers take the lead in the top half of the inning, 3-2. to two. And Kosciuszko will have an opportunity to answer. And they will send, let's see, Holden McGee, Aiden Howard, and Ryan Tillman to the plate. And I do see the defensive change. Seth Miller went to right field, so... 
I'm assuming Moss Bruce just came out. So that's that's gonna be that's gonna be what happened there. Seth Miller is in right field. Tolano is at second, and those are your defensive changes. It is Holden McGee stepping in to work against the pitcher whose name still eludes us. That first pitch is a little out of the zone for ball one, ball two. Okay, I have a name, Curtis, Curtis. Robbie Curtis is what we're getting for the pitcher. He's got a 3-0 count to the leadoff batter, Holden McGee. So, Robbie Curtis, yeah, sometimes it, that happens. Sometimes you're, he's probably on the roster somewhere, but is is one of those different number for the home jersey and the away jersey. So, uh, this jersey's number eight, and the number eight is not on the roster. But Robbie Curtis is who's on the mound, the lefty. Ball four for the third straight inning. The Whippet leadoff man reaches base via walk. Going to have a courtesy runner as Holden McGee is the pitcher. That is Christian Thrash that will come in to run for Holden McGee. Aiden Howard will step in. Howard, a strikeout victim, is first at bat. So Brooks Tolano, he went one and a third, gave up one hit, walked five, struck out one, and gave up the two runs and hit two batters. One time, Curtis is able to find the strike zone. Lefty-lefty matchup here. Third innings for Whippets Baseball are presented by Renaissance Insurance. Howard lays down a good butt. It is McCulloch, the only one that can get it. And it's safe at first is Howard legging it out. A little butt for a base hit for the sophomore. McCulloch coming down. And I said it was just a great butt. I mean, McCulloch did just about everything he could do to get the playoff. But we got a. Meeting between the coach and the umpire. I think Coach Tillman wants to appeal. You know, infield umpire made the call, so he can appeal to the home plate umpire to to make a, an assessment there. So that's what the stoppage in play is at the moment. Well, they will say that he was indeed safe. It was a bang bang play over at first. You know, it was one of those. Just a just a great butt by Howard and McCulloch had a long way to run and stretch by Ricardo. One of those that if you had the benefit of replay and probably would go to the tape, so to speak, but don't have that in high school baseball. But Ryan Tillman steps in. Runners on first and second. Tillman walked his last at bat. He lays down a butt. It's foul off to the right side. Yeah, Tillman walked and came around to score on that sacrifice fly from Andrew Mansell. That tie, at that point, it tied the game. The Whippets are down right now, 3-2. to two. Ricardo, once again, coming in, playing really shallow at first, and McCulloch at third still staying back. Bunt goes down the third base line. It's hit Curtis coming off the bag to – make the play but no one can make a play as Curtis is the left-hander he would have had to turn around and his whole body to throw to first he looked like he might want to flip it to third how about back-to-back -back butts have loaded the bases for the whippets you got Christian Christian Thrash over at third Aiden Howard at second Tillman at first and John White Rusco the lefty at the plate he hit by a pitch his last at bat Pitches fastball inside corner for strike one. How about that couple of back-to-back -back bunts? You know, we've been talking about the 1974 uh, state championship team. So fastball stays up high for ball one. You know, the 1974 state championship team honored before the game 50 years of uh, uh, since that 
state championship, the only state championship in Kosciuszko uh, baseball history. But uh, I was talking to some of the players, Gary Taylor on that team beforehand, and he said that the team put down eight bunts in a row in that game one that they played here uh, in Kosciuszko against Poplarville. And back then they didn't play at a neutral location. You would play home and away. And then if, you know, uh, you had a game three, I think it was a coin flip. Uh, but they played game one here that the Whippets won. As Rusko looks at strike two, there was a stoppage there where Rusko walked down and talked to Coach McBride. But, yeah, so uh, Gary Taylor said that the Whippet team did eight bunts in a row. So Whippets have done two in a row right here. I'm not sure we'll see eight in a row. Rusko yeah, hits one to the th left side. One run's going to come in to score. Now they're going to hold Howard at third base. Rusko just poked one out to the gap. Bases will stay loaded and will be tied up. So give Rusko the RBI. Match three singles in a row. Thrash comes around to score. Howard goes to third. Tillman is second. As Braden Rigby, Whippets freshman second baseman, will come to the plate. Still nobody out. He walked his last at bat. Looks at strike one. You know, all that rain last night, we told you the field looks pretty good for the most part, but out there deep in the hole at shortstop, you kind of got some what I call a cow pasture-ish kind of dirt. That butt's going to be popped up in the air. There's a – it's caught at third. They're going to double off Howard at third base. So that's a double play. As Rigby elevated a little bit. McCulloch had come in to make the catch, and then it was Hood covered over at third. So they got the double play. You don't see the the, the five six double play put out. You don't see that that often. But runners on first and second, and Andrew Manchel will step in. Tate Miller has to stand up, and he's. Some, some miscommunication between he and his dugout. Kind of gave like the I don't I don't understand signal. Fast ball up high, ball one. Well, that was a big break for the Chargers right there as the Whippets are showing no signs of letting up. Bases loaded, nobody out. They got runners on first and second with two outs. Mansell. Swings, comes up empty, even to count at one and one. But yeah, I got a picture of that 1974 state championship team I might put up on the on the screen if you're uh, if you're watching that video feed on the Boswell Media YouTube channel. You see some of these guys that were uh, youngsters. Swinging strike two. That's on that 1974 championship team. Let's see, you got a former mayor, Jimmy Cockcroft, was on that team. Gary Taylor, we talked about, former chancery clerk, James Culpepper, is currently the Ward One Alderman in Kosciuszko. I mean, yeah. <laughs> government officials, all kinds of folks over there. Pitch high ball, too. Larry Harmon, he went on to coach baseball, football in the state of Mississippi, up in the Tupelo area. Ted Milton, who was the coach of that team, ended up winning a State championship uh, down at Macomb a couple of years after we get here. Whippets are running. Hit and run is on. And it's fouled off. So, yeah, the 1974 team. I got to root down. In 1973, the team played for North State. Ended up losing that one. They won the state championship in 74. They made it back in 75 but lost. That high ball three to make the count full. Everybody be moving on this one, full count, two outs. Andrew Mansell today is 0 for 1. He scored high fly ball, foul territory. Given chase is Miller from behind the plate, and it gets just out of play. Let's see, Mansell scored a run. He walked to... Lead off the game, end up coming around to score, and then he had a sacrifice fly in the second that tied the game. Everybody goes back to their base, and we'll be moving again. 
We're tied at three. Mansell trying to find one in the gap to get that tie over. That pitch is outside for ball four. Well, they're loaded again for Braxton Smith. Now batting number one, Braxton Smith. Braxton Smith today is 0 for 1. Walked and had that sack bunt in the first. He looks at one upstairs for ball one. Lefty Curtis winds and delivers. That one's hit to second base and streaking over to make the catch is Talano in the gap right along the edge of the grass. The Whippets tie it up, but that's all that they can do as uh, they get one run on three hits. There were no errors and three left on base. Through three complete innings, we're tied at three. You're listening to Whippets Baseball from Boswell Media Sports. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Atala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served to you daily at the drive-thru at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive-thru. Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Memorial Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. We've got a tight ball game here from the Itala County Fairgrounds as we're tied up at three to start the top of the fourth inning. The Chargers will send Brooks Tolano, seven, eight, nine to the plate. First pitch is a High fly ball, Andrew Mansell at center field says he has it, and he does. One pitch and one out. Oh, that one was hit very high in a day like today when that wind is not showing any signs of slowing down. It's just changing directions. Jalen James will step in. He's the left fielder. He's got a single. He's one for one. Second straight lefty. The lineup, McGee's pitch runs outside for ball one. Fourth innings for Whippets Baseball brought to you by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. Highway 12 and Kosciuszko across from McDonald's. Fastball stayed low. Ball two. 55 pitches for Holden McGee. Andrew Mansell playing a little bit to the right, not playing straight up. A little chopper to the right side, going to be hard. It is McGee gets it and throws to first in time for the out. One. McGee almost probably could have reached up and tagged the runner, but James gets down the line very well. So McGee had to throw it to Smith at first. Two down now. And Hood stepping in. That's Jack Hood. He was... A strikeout victim. His only other at bat in the second inning. Pitch low. Ball one. We'll give you an update on Whippet softball when we get it. We're taking on DeSoto Central down in a tournament in the Jackson area. Pitch is popped up foul. You want to count up at one and one. Looks like Kosciuszko leads it five to three in the top of the third inning. After a home run by Mary Kimball Price. That pitch was off the plate for ball two. 
So Mary Kimball with a home run. Give the Whippets the lead, 5-3 to three in that one. Tournament down in Flowood. Swing and strike two from Jack Hood. Evens the count up at two balls and two strikes. We're knotted up at three apiece. Curveball stays up. Count goes full. Top of the order, waiting on deck. That's Lawson Stevens. It's Choctaw County squad. Just had a series with Moorville. Down the line, it's going to get off the legs of Howard and roll into left field. I think that it is Hood going to stay at first base. We'll go back to the top of the order. To the top of the order for the Chargers, number nine, Lawson Stevens. So I'll go down as an E5. And Lawson Stevens checks in. Yep. Choctaw County 5-10 and ten in their division. They're 2-1. and one. Their last outing was against Moorville. 17 to nothing loss on Tuesday. Uh, yesterday's game, or Thursday's game, was it yesterday? No, yesterday, the 22nd. Yesterday's game, a little bit closer. They lost 8-4. to four. Throw over. Kosciuszko's last game was against Eupora earlier this week, 5-3. Coach McBride's uh, former team. Whippets lost that one 5-3. But the important number for the Whippets is 2-0. and oh. In the division, first pitch to Lawson Stevens is low and outside. Ball one. 2-0 and in region three. Uh, puts them on a fast track. Maybe get that one seed out of the division. Still got a couple of division opponents to play. Louisville next week, Greenwood after that, then Caledonia towards the you know, on over into April. Low ball two. But you want to get that. If you get that one seed out of the division, you get the home field advantage in the uh, at least the first round of the playoffs as you would play game one and three at home. You'd have to go on the road for game two. But you'd potentially the, the, the important one, the game three, would be back here in Kosciuszko. Fast ball, catches outside corner for strike one. Have not seen the bracket yet to know where Whippets might be. Stacking up, you know, when you get to the postseason, which division is matched up with which division. Fastball strike two. But Whippets are in a different division, region three. The only person that came over from that division was Louisville. The rest of the, the crew, League Central, West Lauderdale, Northeast Lauderdale, they're still all in region four. So, You don't have to face a West Lauderdale in the regular season. You might have to see him in a postseason. The pitch low in the dirt. Oh, count goes full. Two outs, runner at first to be moving on to play. McGee gets Lawson Stevens chasing the high fastball. And that is it. The second strikeout of the ball game for Holden McGee. And the Choctaw County Chargers go down. No runs, no hits, one error, and one left on base. We're tied at three, going to the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. Boswell Media Sports. Yeah, 
And welcome back into Kosciuszko Whippets Baseball. Coming to you from the Italian County Fairgrounds. Brett Riley here. Got Donald back at the studio. Saturday baseball. Nice day for a game. Originally scheduled to be a 1 o'clock first pitch, but the kind of got a little wet here in Italian County yesterday, so we pushed it back. And thankfully, there's been lots of sunshine and lots of wind to help that field dry out. So Whippets will send three, four, and five to the plate. Baird Kewen, the Whippets catcher, steps in, looks at strike one. Kewen today 0 for 2. He struck out and then hit a sack fly but drove in a run. And that sack fly back in the first inning. That one comes in, hits him on the leg. So. it would be the fourth straight freebie for the Whippets. The first three innings, the Whippets were issued walks to lead off the inning. Now it's a hit by pitch. We had Goss, yeah, Bradley Goss going in to run for Q and over at first base as Bailey Powers steps in. Powers walked in the first. Had a little pop-up fly ball to end the second. Runner's going to take off. There's a throw down, and Goss is in there safely. Boy, straight steal all the way. Goss was, go, Goss was gone before the pitch ever left Curtis's hand. Good jump there by Goss. Power swings on the high fastball. Comes up empty to even the count at one and one. About time to give you the Whippet alumni update. We got papers flying everywhere. This is a windy day. We got to make sure we get stuff that's tamped down up here. Look back at second. Power is going to send one through the gap. It's short. It's knocked down by Hood. But now it ends up rolling through. So the Whippets have runners on the corners and nobody out. That will go down as a hit as Hood was playing closer to the bag at second and then had to try to come over and make the, make the play. So that makes it runners on the corners and nobody out with Holden McGee, the Whippets pitcher, stepping in. McGee is one for two today. He singled in the first, walked, excuse me, one for one, singled in the first and walked in the third. Maybe a throw over to first and P Powers is back. So I don't imagine that Bailey Powers is going to be hanging at first base too long. You know how aggressive the Whippets like to run, and there he does. He does go. There's the throw. It's going to roll away and roll into center field. The run's going to come home, and the Whippets are going to take the lead. Yeah, that time Tate Miller came up throw and looked like he might have. He, I don't think when he went to plant his leg to throw, he kind of slipped down. It looked like they were going to try to go for the throw it to the second baseman and then try to come right back home with it. But I said Miller, when he kind of comes up throwing, looks like his plant foot didn't. He slipped or lost his footing or something. And so, so Powers goes to second, and Goss comes home to score. And Whippets lead it four to three. And it's McGee swings and fouls it off to even the count up at one ball and one strike. So Whippets take the four to three lead. And Ricardo coming in at first base as McGee fouls that one off into Tate Miller's glove. No balls and two strikes to count. Whippets trying to threaten here. Runner in scoring position. 0-2 pitch, high above the eyes. So evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Bottom of the fourth inning, Whippets with a 4-3 lead. The lefty 
Curtis in on the on the mound. There's the throw. It's a little chopper to the third base side. McCulloch is going to go to first to get the out. No! Ricardo loses it. And there will be runners on corners again. So that's probably going to be an E3. E3, runners on the corners. Aiden Howard stepping in. McGee going to stay in and run for himself, it looks like. So nobody's coming in to run for McGee. I wonder if McGee's going to be on the mound when we come back out. Howard going to go ahead and square around to Bunt. And he looks at strike one. Howard today one for two. He singled in the third, and then he struck out in the first inning. Curveball goes back and finds the strike zone for strike two. So Aiden Howard digging in with its runner, runners on the corners. On the lefty lefty matchup here. That ball's hit hard in the center field. Jeremiah Miller coming in. They're going to tag the runner at third. Now he's going to stop and go back. So it's hit just shallow enough. Let the runner not able to get home, and everybody's going to stay at the back. They are out one down in the inning. And, hey, we got a special guest joining us on commentary right now. I didn't know we dropped his name just a few minutes ago when we were talking about those back-to-back -back bunts that the Whippets put up. It's Gary Taylor who was on that 1974 state championship team. Uh, Gary, you told me that, Y'all did more than back-to-back -back bunch, right? Y'all did about eight? How many was it? I think I think uh, we bunted the first time. They couldn't defend the bunt, so we bunted eight times in a row before they finally got an out. Runner goes down to second base on the throw down. Bailey Powers is going to come home to score, and the Whippets will take a two-run lead. So eight bunts in a row. Never seen that before. We had neither. <laughs> neither had Poplarville. We practiced bunting every day. And it came in handy that day because everybody knew how to bunt on the team. Uh, Coach Milton wouldn't let you bat unless you could bunt. Yeah, and uh, so you get the win there, game one, I believe. Was it my was my cousin? He was pitching that game, right, Bernie? Bernie Steen was on the mound the first game, Yeah, yes. my, my Com cousin. Pitched a complete game. Yeah, Bernie pitched that game one. So back then, you didn't, you know, nowadays you, they go to the Mississippi Braves Stadium, but y'all would play home and away. And then would you coin flip for if you needed a game three, or how did that go? Well, y'all didn't, didn't know. That's a good question. We didn't know. <laughs> y'all did, got it done in two. He told us uh, <laughs> what time the bus left and where to be, and that's what we did. So we don't know how, where the third game would have been. Y'all yeah, got it done in uh, in two, so you didn't have to worry about that. Poplarville is a long, long way down there. So that was game one. So you go to game two, and uh, something happened in, in game two. Is a look throw back to second as Curtis just kind of fakes it. Uh, turned a triple play, and I, I understand you were the one that turned the triple play. So how did that happen? You don't often see triple plays in any level of baseball, but not a lot in high school baseball. Well, they had the bases loaded and nobody out, and they hit a line drive right at my ankles, and everybody on the bases started running. So actually it was pretty easy to turn the, double, the triple play because uh, the guy at third was at home, and I stepped on third, threw it to first base. Larry Harmon was at first base, and that got us out of a – a jam that we were in. And Tillman flies out to center field, so back-to-back -back fly outs to center field, and there are two outs in the uh, inning now, and it will bring up John Wyatt Rusko, the Whippets left fielder, to the uh, to the plate. So you had a, a triple play in that game, and uh, was it Kerry Howell that pitched that second game? Kerry was the, the starter. In those days, if you got the, if you got the start, you, you finished the game just about. So, Bernie pitched a complete game the first game, and Kerry pitched a complete game in the second. And that one went five to four in that game, too, as That's right. John Wyatt Rusko looks at strike one there on the outside corner. So, uh, that was uh, 50 years ago. We might have to give you a, a, a trivia question. Do you know uh, who was president in 1974? 1974. That would have been um, – Richard Nixon. 
it depending on what part of the year it that's would right. have been. So it was Richard Nixon or, it, or Gerald Ford. That's right. One of the, one of one of the two. So, uh, yeah, we were looking up all those fun facts. I think a gallon of milk was like a dollar fifteen or something like that in 1974. We didn't want to look at a gallon of gas. That might just make us make us mad to see what it cost right. back in 1974. But uh, hang on, that pitch fouled off by Rusco. I got a little something here I can bring up on the. Well, we'll do it in the changeover so we don't miss anything on the uh, on the on the field here. But uh, you guys play. Was it at this? Was the baseball field here? Yes. Where it is now? Yes. Okay. So you guys play right here as Rusko looks at ball two. Two balls and two strikes. So how many of you guys uh, were you? Was it 17 of y'all on the team, right? 17 on the team, and I think uh, Randy Holloway's passed away. And there were two or three that couldn't come, so we had a pretty good turnout. I think we had 11 here today. As that ball is going to be caught by Tolano to – end the inning but we'll stay right here as we got our guest on with us the whippets get two runs on uh, just one hit one error and one left on base so uh, after five complete or four complete innings the whippets lead at five two three but now i'll bring this up right here since we got the little commercial going on here in between the breaks there's a picture if you're watching on the uh, on the video feed there and uh, that is the 1974 1A state championship team. And uh, I know which one you are, Gary. I wonder if our listeners can, can, can put that one out. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> the hairstyles were a little bit different then than they are now, as, as yeah. you can see. Back or middle row, second to the right, or second from the end on the right. So that is Gary Taylor standing right behind you. I bet people might can figure out who that tall, lanky one is. That's right. That's the Mayor Cocker office right behind me. <laughs> yeah, he's at the back, back right. And then, let's see, uh, on the back row, one, two, three is another city government official. That's James Culpepper. Correct. Who's a uh, city uh, uh, board one alderman for the city of Kosciuszko. And so uh, you guys uh, had a, a, a great team that year. And then uh, you went to play for the state championship the next year. Is that right? That's right. We played uh, St. Joe in the st- championship the next year. And they beat us uh, two games to none, just like we beat Popperville two to nothing the year before. And before that, what is it, 1973, you guys played for the North State. Is that right? That's right. We played in the North State. Bruce beat us uh, two games to one. So, yeah, so you played. Uh, we had Coach Milton there, North State in 73, state championships uh, in 74, then runner-up in 1975. So, yeah, pretty good three-year run right there we with did. The, for the Whippets. We had a good, a good uh, career and uh, had some pretty good players and some really good coaching, so it uh, worked out for us. What, were the games on the radio back then? Did, did they have any anybody? I on, think the championship uh, uh, on, series was on the radio. On WKOZ? Yeah, but the uh, – the regular season regular games season. or not? Yeah, yeah. I know WKOZ been been broadcasting Kosciuszko for a uh, for a long time. For a long time, at least fifty years. Yeah, so for a long time. But yeah, we can. Uh, okay, we got we got another guest yeah. that that that's going to come up here. So we'll uh, we'll uh, let Gary hand the headset off, and we will uh, welcome in our other guest as the Whippets take on. The Choctaw County Chargers as Braden Rigby is on to pitch for the Kosciuszko Whippets. So we'll close the book on the McGee as that run is thrown over to first base. Ball hit sharply to shortstop. Tillman made the play, but this uh, lo- good legging out down the line was Jeremiah Miller for a leadoff single. So joining us right now is uh, Coach Ted Milton, coach. It's not, How you doing? It's nice to meet you. You too, man. So, Good to be here. So, tell us a little bit about coming back to Kosciuszko. What's it been like after all all these years coming back <coughs> and, and seeing some of your former players? Uh, it was great. You know, my first year here, it took me a year to learn how to spell Kosciuszko. I didn't know where it was. There's some I people got that live here probably still don't know how to spell it. <laughs> don't worry. But uh, I, I was able to get here because of the head football coach, Art Nestor, coached me in high school. And uh, I came here and uh, – you know, very fortunate to have some great ball players. You know, like the old saying, you can't win the Kentucky Derby with a mule. We was lucky to have some thoroughbreds here. So, uh, it, you know, all the credit goes to them. They took the coaching and they had a great work habit. And, 
you know, we was able to be successful. Yeah, and uh, I understand you you were pretty young as a head coach, were you in your early uh, early twenties? <laughs> yeah. <20s? laughs> yeah, I was. I was uh, twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. So uh, coming here, so what what do you remember about that uh, that season? You know, seventeen to two is a pretty good record. So uh, besides what Gary and I talked about, is that pitch is fouled down the line? It's Seth Miller at the plate. So what do you remember about that season? Well, you know, let the kids play. You know, I tried to, we tried to prepare them, you know, for the game. Like Gary was saying, we tried to go over the small things such as bunting and when we had to use it and had great pitching. The game hadn't changed. You got to catch it a little bit. You got to throw it and you got to put it in play. And the great thing about uh, Bernie and, and Kerry was they threw strikes. And, you know, and they didn't waste pitches. So we went right at them and, it was just a, a, a great group of guys that knew how to play and knew how to win. They weren't going to be denied. Hey, Bernie's my kinfolk. You don't have to talk. Well, you don't he, have to talk was, nice about him. One. You don't I'd have love, to talk I nice about him to, like that. I would have loved to see him, but he's not here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but he did a great job for us. So uh, yeah, so seventeen and two. Y'all didn't play as many games back then as they as they played. Well, them. back then you had spring training in February, football. So mm-hmm. I coached football. So I had to do spring training. We didn't have but. Probably, what, Gary, a week to get ready for the first game, and we started our season during spring break. So you're talking about, like, March the 12th, 13th, you know. And and uh, now they get to start earlier and play, I think, 30 games is their match now. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, you have uh, – now you're running into basketball. Whippets have a couple of basketball players that missed uh, one or two games yeah. because the basketball season kind of yeah. bleeds, yeah. bleeds so, over. Uh, but, uh, you know – and most of our, our players did play football, you know, and a lot of them played basketball. So uh, we had a lot of guys that was dual sport players, and it made them better athletes. And they were in competition more, which helped out. Whippets lead it 5-3 to three here in the top of the fifth inning. Choctaw County got the tie and run at the plate, though. It's Seth Miller. Curve ball by Braden Rigby goes down swinging does Miller. So that'll be Rigby's first strikeout. And all whippet strikeouts brought to you by the Italic County Farm Bureau. One down in the inning, stepping up. Caleb McCulloch, McCulloch, he had a home run earlier that it almost landed over there on the on the football field. So he got a uh, a good uh, piece of that one. We're speaking with Ted Milton, coach of the 1974 Whippet State Championship team. They were honored before the game today. Did you ever think you'd have any of these guys be a mayor, a chancery clerk, an alderman? You ever think about that? I feel sorry for Kosciuszko. <laughs> 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 no, they are great guys. You know, I knew they were going to be successful in anything they went in because great work habit, you know. And I'm not going to say very smart, but I uh, had a great work habit. Uh, and uh, so we had a couple of co Larry Harmon goes on, and he has a great career yeah, as, as, as a coach. Yep, he did. Up at Tupelo. And I think he coached a little bit here. Yeah. You know, about four or five years after I left, he was coach here. Yeah, you know that, that Harmon name in Kosciuszko is McCulloch hits one in the left field. John White Rusco had it played perfectly, comes in to make the catch. Two down in the inning. But, yeah, you got that Harmon name. You know, there's yeah. a lot of Harmons come through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had Clarence, he had Mike on. I was fortunate enough to coach all of them, uh, and, you know. Uh, Antonio, related to him. He's up at Mississippi State, you know, right <laughs> now. He's a, a wide receiver for the okay. football team. And so after you left Kosciuszko, you went to – you won another championship at Macomb. Is that right? Right, right, right. It, it, we basically had another bunch just like this bunch. And uh, when I was able to uh, – when I took over that, I kept a bunch of eighth graders. We didn't have uh, – junior high baseball back then we had jv varsity and i kept eight or nine eighth graders and uh just told the parents that they're not going to be able to play a whole lot but they will practice and by the time they got to be 10th graders i think we got beat out in the uh south state and when they're juniors we won it and then we were on track to win it their senior year and my number one pitcher went down so you know in high school you just don't have that many pitchers and when he went down, it kind of knocked us down. So, But they were a great bunch like the Kosciuszko bunch. Yeah, in high school, one player can uh, you know, make or break you. As yeah. that, uh, Jeremiah Miller is able to take third base on a pass ball, but he was stealing anyway, so he would have been safe no matter if the ball got away from Barrett Kewa. And then Rigby and winds and delivers. And that one's another one that's a little wide to the right. Kewa wasn't able to knock it down. So, uh, Coach, we asked – Gary, uh, a trivia question about who was the uh, the 
the the president during 1974. Uh, do you know what the number one song was in May of 1974? I don't even know if we had radio then. <laughs> 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 no, I know. Oh, I got I got two of them. Okay, one that I'm going to say because y'all won the game on May 23rd was when you won the championship. Right. The Jackson Five as Ricardo takes one in between the numbers, so the have runners on the corners uh, with two outs on the hit by pitch. The Jackson Five and Dancing Machine yeah. was uh, May 23rd, but two days after you guys won the championship, Ray Stevens went, okay. to, went to number one with the streak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and Ray was a good one. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say the streak yeah. on the radio. Yeah. Don't yeah. look, don't look, Ethel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. the, uh, so what? Uh, what? What's 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 different about the game? You mentioned it earlier. You know that you know baseball is baseball, right? So yeah. what, what, besides like watching here today, what's what's different about the game than when when you guys uh, played and when you coached? Uniforms. <laughs> yeah, 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 they got more uh, uh, more selections. Yeah, they, like I told you before, the game hadn't changed. I mean, you got to catch it, throw it, and hit it. But the facilities are much better. We didn't have this. I compliment Kosciuszko for that. Their facilities, football field, all that looks great. Uh, they got weight rooms they can work out with. We didn't have weight rooms and. When I played at State, we didn't lift weights. We just went and played. And, uh, and you know, the metal bats had really changed. They've got, I've always said with aluminum bats, you make a poor hitter a pretty good hitter. You make a good hitter an excellent hitter. And you make that excellent hitter somebody you're not going to get out. Yeah. You know, and it's dangerous. And the way it comes off that. And uh, we played with wooden bats. And they weren't the greatest wooden bats. But we were able to be successful with it. And. It's just the equipment is so much better now for the kids, you know. And uh, that's, that's great to see. Baseball, Mississippi has come a long way in baseball. So uh, at, at Mississippi State, you play for the for the legend, Ron Polk? No, I play, play for Paul De, uh, Paul Gregory and Tom DeArma. Okay, so a little bit before. Yeah, we, uh, were, the, Coach Polk got we were the first Mississippi State team to go to College World Series in 71. All right, so was it was it at Omaha then? Yes, sir. The old ballpark. Yeah, the Rose, Rosenblatt. Yes, sir, and it was big. That one's hit the mound, and there's a good play by Braden Rigby. Comes off the mound to field his position and make the throw over to first, so the Whippets get out of the inning unscathed. The let's see, the Chargers got no runs on one hit. There were no errors and. There was one left on base. So we'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning, and Kosciuszko leads it 5-3. to three. Hang on, I don't know if you saw the, the, the picture, Coach, that we brought up there. Right? Yeah, right? I've seen it. <laughs> right. I've seen it. Oh, yeah. I had a bunch of ugly dudes yeah. there. Huh? And so, yeah, that, that's you in the back left. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's me. The back that's left. Me. So, yeah. uh, well, Coach, uh, you know, you say you were in your early 20s. You're not – too much older than some of these. The, no, I wasn't. These guys, I wasn't, these guys but, there. You know, I was lucky. They respected me, and, and I respected them, you know. And we tried to take care of them, and, and we did that. So and, uh, we we have to talk about uh, the mayor of Possum Neck is what they called him, Randy Holloway. He was something. Right? He was something. Yeah. Randy tell you now what he thought. Yeah. <laughs> he was not shy. And it's like uh, I said this at his, at his uh, funeral. When somebody asks you about Randy, he was a player. And I think that's the greatest compliment an athlete can get. I didn't say how great he was. His He was a player. He got after it. And, uh, you know, he went to USM as a catcher, and I think he did a pretty good job. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I miss him. We all think about him, and we miss him here today. Yeah, Randy was a uh, he was an ardent supporter of all things mm-hmm. uh, Kosciuszko. Uh, listened to our broadcast, watched our broadcast, right. and you know would, would, would tweet out uh, or put Facebook links to our broadcast, and just a big, a huge support mm-hmm. of uh, Kosciuszko Whippets uh, baseball. And as I said, right. that, that's what they called him, the, the mayor of Possum Neck. Mm-hmm. If you know mm-hmm. where, if you well, know where Possum his Neck. mom and dad were something now. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the mayor, so. mayor of Possum Neck yeah. down there on yeah. Highway 19, yeah. going yeah. towards west. Right well, there. well, Coach Milton, you you guys are going up to the square tonight to have a little uh, little something, a little shindig. Well, I reckon right? so. Go up and eat, and, uh, and then I got to head back to the coast. That's where I live now. Okay. And uh, you don't live close to Poplarville, do you? No, we, <laughs> we go to Poplarville a good bit. I go over there. Uh, I got a grandson playing now in the uh, middle school age, and 
you know, they play Popperville and teams like that, and I go watch it. Popperville's a very athletic yeah, uh, town. The, they were great in football. The Hornets. Wow, yeah. Yeah, they yeah, – You know, I think three years in a row in football, they made it to Jackson. They came uh, close to knocking off the Louisville Wildcats. Right. So kind of mm-hmm. just knows a little bit about them. Yeah, yeah. As, and so, uh, yeah, it was a long trip on that uh, <laughs> that uh, bus, I guarantee you. you know, I, it won a charter. I do Holmes Community College football, and, you know, we play – at Pearl River, yeah, every now and then. Yep, so yep, I, I, yep. I've made the trip to Poplarville uh, yeah. a couple of. Y'all got y'all a new coach over there, Marcus Wood. He and mm-hmm. I are good friends. Yeah, Braden yeah. Rigby leads off the bottom of the fifth inning. A little bloop single out to right field. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I talk to Coach uh, Coach Wood all the time. Yeah. I, last week was tell, his, uh, when you see Marcus tell him uh, that I said hello. I, I coached with him one year. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely yeah. tell him yeah. tell him that and when I can get a hold of him. Well, All right. well coach, we don't want to keep you from uh, you know going to I think y'all gotta be up there close about to five. about five o'clock. Yeah. So uh, coach Ted Milton with the nineteen seventy four uh, Kosciuszko Women's State Championship team. He and Gary Taylor joining us here uh, on the on the broadcast. And uh, coach, thanks for thanks for coming on and hey, hope you guys have a have a great time tonight. Thank you for having us. It was nice to meet okay. you, Coach. As Andrew Andrew Mansell stepping in to the plate. Whippets have a runner on first base. And Andrew Mansell square around and show bunt. Rigby takes off for second. Here's the throw. He is safe. Ball gets away from the shortstop, who, Hood, who is covering the bag. It's a good throw from Tate Miller, but got that wind really picking up here now. Rigby's able to make it down to second base. One and one the count to Andrew Mansell. Fifth innings for Whippets Baseball brought to you by Watkins Warren Stafford. Mansell tries to lay that one down, and he cannot. It'll be one ball, two strikes. Watkins, Warden, Stafford, go see them. It's tax time. You go see them. They'll take care of you. As Curtis looks back towards second base. Well, hey, appreciate Coach, uh, Coach Ted Milton and Gary Taylor for coming on the uh, the broadcast with us here. Pitches up high for ball two. Resetting everything after our interview segments. Whippets lead at five to three. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Braden Rigby led off the inning with a little bloop single. Stole second base. So Whippets have a runner in a scoring position trying to maybe add to their lead. Andrew Mansell, top of the order. Swings. It gets away from Tate Miller. He can't find it. Going to have to throw down to first and they get him just in time. Well, Mansell moves it pretty good. And then strike out for Curtis. Now batting number one. That is his second strikeout of the game. But on the drop third strike, Rigby was able to move on over to third base. So one down in the inning and a run just 90 feet away. Braxton Smith digging in. He'll look at ball one up high in the zone. Fast ball, stayed a little off the plate, ball two. Up elevated for ball three. Well, Braxton Smith coming in. Trying to draw a one out walk. Beard Kewen, the whippets catcher, standing on deck. That one finds the strike zone. Three and one the count. I'll give you the book on Holden McGee as we didn't get to that while, while we were talking to our guest. Outside corner call strike two. Holden McGee goes four innings, gives up four hits, walks three, no, excuse me, walks one, strikes out two, and gives up three runs. Hard hit ball, high, drifting out. It is Tolano going out from second base to make the catch. A few steps deep into the grass. Two down now. Beard Kewen, Whippets catcher, stepping in. Now batting number 
number seven, Barrett Kewen. Kewen today is uh, hit by a pitch, struck out, and drove in a run on a sacrifice fly. The run representing Kewen came around to score as it was the pitch is off the plate for ball one. But yeah, Holden McGee, four innings pitched, four hits. High ball, two, three runs, one walk, two strikeouts. And Braden Rigby has come on in relief. Two balls, no strikes. The count to the Whippets catcher, Bear Kewen. That time the curve ball is able to find itself in the strike zone. Still got to give you our Whippet alumni update. We're getting ready to do that when the coaches and the former players came in. Kewen can't figure out the change up there. Two and two the count. Curtis winds and delivers. Ball hit hard. Right side. I think it's going to get out foul. It does. Kewen hit it a long way. He just hit it foul. Give you a whip at softball update when we can. Oh, it's all Lady Whippets in that one. Another hard hit ball that's going to drift foul out of play. Lady Whippets lead to Soto Central 12 to 3 in the top of the fifth inning. Playing two games down in the metro area tournament at Northwest Rankin. Lost to Northwest Rankin and up on DeSoto Central. Which is high and outside to run the count full. Three balls, two strikes. Another foul ball. Back off in front of us. Bear Kewen with a few Whippet football players on the baseball team. See who else you got. Bailey Powers, a football player. Benny Powell's a football player now. Hot. Rocket into right field, high in the air, but Seth Miller is right where he needs to be to make the catch for outs number three. Whippets get a leadoff hit from Rigby. Can't move him home. So there were no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Five complete innings of baseball. The Whippets lead it five to three. Hello, I'm State Farm agent Angel Albin McDonald on Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Today, small business owners know just how much hard work is involved in starting and growing a business, but the challenges involved are not foreign to you. You're all in. Still, it doesn't hurt to have some good neighborly help. Like yourself, as a State Farm agent, I'm a small business owner as well. This enables me to help you choose the right insurance coverage to fit your small business needs. So why not insure your small business with the fellow small business owner who also happens to be a good neighbor? Contact me, State Farm agent Angel Alvin McDonald on Highway 12 at 662-289-3161. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. Kosciuszko with a two-run lead, 5-3 to three, over Choctaw County as we start this afternoon's sixth inning. Sixth innings of Whippet Baseball brought to you by Alpha Insurance, Chris Coleman Agency, just off the square downtown Kosciuszko. Braden Rigby still on the mound for the Whippets. And see, coming up to the plate will be six, seven, and eight. Number seventeen, John Reese. So 
So we have a pinch hitter. So pinch pinch hitter for should be Talano. That pitch hits him. That was a pitch hitter for Talano. And then get John Reese Staten. Oh. So Staten gets hit for to lead off the sixth inning, and it's Jalen James that steps in, the lefty. So you have Staten pinch hitting for Talano. Now Jalen James, who's one for two today, singled in the second and grounded out in the fourth. Rigby's first two go, Rigby. out of the zone. Two balls, no strikes. We got a whistle in time. It'll be Coach Dew going to walk out and speak to his pitcher, Rigby. Going to bring in the entire infield. And that gives us time to uh, give you the Whippet alumni update. With, uh, Whippet alums playing baseball, East Mississippi. You got Jacob Nunn, 3-0 on the season. 16 and thirds innings pitched. He's got 16 strikeouts, 4.41 earned run average. Down at Holmes, you got a couple of players play it, one that is injured. Landon Wallace has got a 313 batting average, three runs driven in, four runs scored, two stolen bases. Will Carter is a pitcher. He's pitched seven innings. He's 0-1, got five strikeouts. Uh, it is medical redshirt for Ethan Wood. He got a banged up knee. So uh, Ethan was on with us the last time we were on the air. Ethan was uh, our co-commentator for that game, played down at Holmes Community College, but got the medical red shirt uh, as Rigby delivers one to James, who tips it into Brooks or Baird Kewen's glove. Two one pitch to the left. He is hit into center field. Andrew Mansell going back makes the catch. Play by Andrew Mansell. Speaking of Holmes Community College, Andrew Mansell picked up a basketball offer from the Bulldogs this week. He had, since the last time we talked to you, he's picked up an offer from Holmes, Cahoma, and Arkansas Mid South. And I'll give you brownie points if you know what the mascot is for Arkansas State Mid South. His first pitch swinging into left field. He's going to get down for a base hit in front of Rusco. That's Jack Hood. So, Chargers have runners on first and second. Go back to the top of the order. Now batting number nine, Lawson Stevens. Lawson Stevens, the designated hitter, stepping in. He is 0 for 3. I'll let you stew on what Arkansas State Mid South is. Continue to give you the alumni report. Kalen Powell, older brother Benny Powell, plays baseball up at Fulton, Itawamba Community College. A 227 batting average, four runs driven in, four runs scored, two stolen bases. Look back. That ball's hit up in the air. It's going to be it out of play, I think. No. It didn't get out of play, but it was fouled up enough to where no one could really get to it. It was off to the left side. Rigby came off the mound to try to get to it. But as it is, it's just a, a strike. I thought, thought it was going to be an infield fly situation, but it drifted foul. So it's a strike to Lawson Stevens. Whippets lead at 5-3, to three, top of the sixth inning. Runners on first and second for Choctaw County. Pitch just a little bit off the plate. Got a little bit of a run on it. Rigby long look back at second. Stevens tries to poke one down the line. And reaches out on the other side of the box for it, fouls it off. One ball, two strikes to count. Let's see, we start with Kalen Powell. Go to Millsap, so the Whippets have a couple of majors on the team. 
as Rigby comes set and a throw back to second. Tag not in time. Evan Scott for the Millsaps Majors batting at 257. 16 runs driven in. Seven runs scored. Got five doubles on the season. You got Will Cook as a pitcher. There's a curveball that Stevens is able to catch just enough of to foul it off to stay alive. Will Cook, two and a third innings pitched on the season. One strikeout is just giving up two runs. And now we'll go out to the West Coast. Spokane, Washington, Tyler Van Sice, the Whitworth Pirate. As Rigby, another long look back, will throw to the plate. Not, not by much did that one missed off the plate. Two balls and two strikes. But Tyler Van Sice, 11 and two-thirds innings pitched, 14 strikeouts. He's got an 0-1 record. And their whip it update. All these guys still playing in baseball. Most of them here in the state of Mississippi. But Another foul ball by Stevens. Fouls it off. Count is two balls and two strikes. Rigby taking a little while to get the sign from Kewen. Everybody's ready to go. And bounces in the dirt. And runner will scoot on over to third base. He was moving on the play anyway on the pitch. Makes the count full. Three balls, two strikes. Now runners on the corners. Let's see. It's Jeremiah Miller on deck. Amir Kewen going to come out and going to give some defensive signals there. And they go over what's going on with the runners on the corners. Got the infield back at double play depth. Hoping one ball could get him out of the inning. There's the pitch. Comes inside for ball four, and they're loaded. So got him loaded. And we have a visit to the mound. I believe we're going to have a pitching change, which means we'll give you a pitching change timeout. Let's see. It looks like maybe Aiden Howard is going to come in to pitch. That is what it seems to be, so we're going to step aside for our pitching change break. But Whippets are in a jam. They're going to call on sophomore Aiden Howard to get him out. Bases loaded, only one out. They lead it by two. Top of the sixth inning, we're back in 60 seconds. Come on home to Abbott's Furniture and Appliance. Come on home. Come on home. This tax season, shop local. Shop at Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Ashley Furniture, Homestretch, Serta, and Sealy Bedding. Allen's also has GE Appliances and the best washer and dryer on the market. Speed Queen. Shop at home. Shop Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Kosciuszko and Durant. Come on home. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937. An equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. A Central Tire Service pitching change timeout, and it's Aiden Howard on in relief for the Whippets. We'll try to get him out of a jam. Bases loaded. One out, top of the sixth inning. Kosciuszko with a two-run lead. Tying run down at second. Go-ahead run over at first. Aiden Howard is a sophomore. Let's see if we can give you some of his pitching stats on the season. Aiden Howard, 15 in the third innings pitched. No decisions. 
He has given up seven hits, five runs. He's walked 10, struck out 12. So there you go. Let's look at his stats. The Let's see what we did here. Defensively, the Whippets move Holden McGee to third base, and Rigby goes back to second base. So they're, they're only defensive changes you'll, you'll still have. Tillman at short, Braxton Smith at first, left to right in the outfield, Rusco, Mansell, and Carter as the number two hitter, Jeremiah Miller, stepping in. No room for error. Curve ball finds the strike zone for Howard. From Jeremiah Miller, he is one for three today. And a single is last at bat. Another curve ball that comes back into the zone. Good looking pitch there from Howard. Jeremiah Miller, the center fielder. So the whip it's back at double play depth. The pitch is a little bit a little bit high and outside. The call hasn't been there. Rigby would have had a strikeout if that call had had been there. Now they're at bat. Tillman's going to come in now. Tillman and both pitch outside ball two. Miller thought about giving swing, but yeah, you had the the two middle infielders, Tillman and uh, Rigby, both charging there. Now they're both up playing on the grass, maybe expecting to go home with anything. That's high ball three. Nowhere to put them. If you're Kosciuszko, count goes full. Once again, whip it infield, kind of playing in on the grass. Yep. High outside ball four, so that brings in a run. Dying run now just 90 feet away. And who you don't want to see walking to the plate is coming to the plate. No, oh, excuse me. Seth it's Seth Miller. It's not Caleb McCulloch just yet. So Seth Miller, he is 0 for today. Pitch is low and outside, ball one. Let's see, he struck out back in the fifth. He walked in the third and a pop fly ball back in the first. Pitch, a fast ball, strike one. Evens the count up. Tying run, just 90 feet away. Seth Miller, the second, well, he's playing right field now. He started the game at second base. Got, chases a high one. Strike two. Yeah, Miller... Started at second base, and then when Brooks Talano was taken out, Talano went to second, and Miller went to right field. That pitch comes in. That will be two balls and two strikes. The count a little bit low and inside. Whip it infield all on the grass. Still playing there. Hit into right field. That is going to get over the head of Carter. One run scores. Two runs score. They're sending in. Here's the third run. Three run scores. A bases clearing double for Seth Miller. Three runs driven in, and he'll stand up at second base. That'll give Choctaw County a 7-5 lead. You know, the Whippets had all kind of come in. Even the outfield was playing in a little bit shallow, and Miller just found the right spot out there in right field. And that brings up Caleb McCulloch. McCulloch's one for three. Pitches inside corner, called strike one. 
steal just the one out. Howard looks back at second. Sort of an excuse me swing. It's fouled down the line at third base. That one kind of came in and jammed McCulloch. It looked like he wanted to swing. But he did swing. Makes no balls and two strikes. Home plate umpire originally said one and one, but he was corrected. Kewen, it was Baird Kewen turned around and asked for the count and ends up being 0 and 2. Swing and strike three. Big strike out there by Howard. That's his first. Two down in the inning now. Strikeouts for Whippet Baseball brought to you by Tyler County Farm Bureau. Jonathan Ricardo is at the plate. He's reached base three times. One by a hit and two um, by being hit by the ball. Two down in the inning. A runner at second base. Howard, another long look back at second. Runner takes off to third. Here's the throw. And he's going to slide around the tag. Yeah, the throw came down from Q, and it was pretty much on time there. And I think just a good slide by Seth Miller around the tag from McGee got him in. As the ball was thrown to the front of the bag, and Miller goes in sliding towards the back of the bag. So just a good piece of base running there. Pitch was out of the zone, ball one. I think that pitch was a strike. We're going to call it a strike anyway. Sound like he said one and one. There's a swinging strike two. Okay, we're, we're, we're right. Strike two. Well, not, not, not a clear signal being given on that one pitch where I just couldn't, just didn't really know what was what the call was. But anyway, one ball, two strikes. Whippers need to strike to get out of the inning. Swing and strike three they do. Back-to-back -back strikeouts close out the inning for the Whippets. But the Chargers are able to take the lead. Four runs on just one, two hits. There were no errors and one left on base. Go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Chargers lead it seven to five. Premier Medical Group. Good health is our priority. Did you know you do not have to drive for specialized care? Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko partners with specialists in urology, cardiology, neurology, and orthopedics. Have your primary care provider refer you to a PMG specialist today. Premier Medical Group, PMG. Good health is our priority. When birthdays and special occasions arrive, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts is the best place to shop for fashionable and classic gifts, home decor, jewelry, hobo purses and wallets. They have new spring footwear and clothing arriving daily. And remember, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts has the most recent wedding registry. Whether you're getting married or shopping for the bride and groom, shop Sullivan's. Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts, Highway 12 across from McDonald's in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Choctaw County going to bring in a new arm to pitch the sixth inning and maybe the seventh inning. Uh, they lead it seven to five. They were pushed four runs across in the top half of the inning, but it is Ricardo, Jonathan Ricardo, that's going to come in and pitch for the Chargers. Let's see. Let me give you the book on Curtis. Curtis goes three innings. He gives up five hits, walks two, strikes out one. 
Gave up three runs, one earned run. So there you go. Ricardo will come in. And defensive changes. It looks like McCulloch goes to first base. I'm trying to get all this going for you here. McCulloch at first base. We got somebody new in the game to play third base. So, Whippets will have four, five, and six due up. Start things off with Bailey Powers. He's one for two today. Reach base on a single and a walk. Now, can't quite tell who that is over third base just yet. I'll try to get that information for you. Pitch came inside for ball one. Maybe close to hitting. Powers. Fast ball inside corner, strike one. Boy, Ricardo, the right hander with the an odd delivery. Let's say say odd. He just he rears back and I don't, oh, pitches high for ball two. I have to take a few more looks at it. It doesn't really. He doesn't. He doesn't follow through a lot. He stays up high when he releases. Maybe that's what it is. It's just sort of a different look. The ball's going to be hit and right to the shortstop. J Hood jumps up and robs Powers of a base hit. Just a good defensive play there. One down in the inning, and it's Holden McGee coming to the plate. He is now playing third base. He's going to lay down a bunt to the third base side. There's the throw. It is in time for the out. No good defense there. Just a good, good bunt by McGee. A good defense by our phantom third baseman. Number I don't have. Do I have Hayden Tuck? It looks. To, to be at third base. So, two quick outs, just like that. Bang, bang. Aiden Howard stepping in, the Whippets pitcher. Looks at ball one. Yeah, I think that's what it is about Ricardo. He doesn't really come over a lot, doesn't follow through, kind of stays up high. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's sort of an odd delivery. Um, Howard gets a piece of it, but it's foul. Tipped that one away. One ball, one strike to count. That pitch way outside. Ball two. Whippets trailing at 7-5, bottom of the sixth inning. Sixth innings for Whippets baseball brought to you by Alpha Insurance, Chris Coleman Agency. Lefty Aiden Howard trying to extend this inning for the Whippets. They need runs. It's also off the plate. Ball three, three balls and one strike. That one comes in and hits him. So the Whippets do have a two out base runner. And Ryan Tillman, the shortstop stepping in. Tillman today's got a hit. Singled in the third, walked and scored in the first. Lasted Left at bat. And never mind. We're going to have a pinch hitter in that spot. The freshman Jackson Schuler will step in. So Schuler going to step in. Take a couple of cuts there. He played in the JV game. I believe he was playing right field in the JV game. But he's going to step in and bat and we're going to have a courtesy or a pinch runner no courtesy runner Howard's the pitcher now right so Christian Thrash will come over and run Whoopets will at least get the tying run to the plate freshman Jackson Schuler is coming back from an injury injured his knee in football season he swings at one fouls it off to the right So 
So you see that if you're watching the, the video stream online brought to you by Allen's Furniture, you can see that knee brace that Schuler has on. That the pitch is low outside. That almost looked like a pitch out on purpose. Uh, maybe thinking about a little pickoff throw down to first base with Whippets being eager to get Christian Thrash over in the scoring position. There he goes, run. It's going to be a hit to Jack Hood. The only play is going to be at first. Pulls the first baseman off the bag, but he's able to get his leg back down on the bag, and that will retire the side. So there were no runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. We'll go to the final inning of play. Kosciuszko trails at 7 to 5. This is physical therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapists Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden, transforming lives spiritually and physically. Reliant Physical Therapy in Meg's Plaza on Veterans Memorial Drive, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Here we go. It's the final inning of play on what's been a tight, tight ball game between uh, neighboring schools. Kosciuszko taking on Choctaw County, just right up the road. If you're wondering what Choctaw County is, it's a combination of Ackerman and Ware. So back in 20, I think 2013 was their first season. But they are in the lead right now, 7-5 to five over Kosciuszko. As we get ready to start the final inning, it'll be Tate Miller, the catcher, stepping in to work against Aiden Howard. First pitch to Howard, a little bit, a little bit high. We're from Howard, a little bit high for ball one. Let's see, Miller's 0 for three today. It's a Tate Miller. There are three Millers in the lineup. He swings. Strike one. You got Jeremiah Miller in center field. Seth Miller in right field. Tate Miller behind the plate. A little off-speed pitch missed out of the zone inside. Ball two. Seventh innings for Whippet Baseball brought to you by Reliant Physical Therapy. The ball's hit to the gap at short, and Tillman gets to it and knocks it down, but it'll squeeze through for a hit. Probably going to be a hit. That was in the gap at short. That's probably what they'll rule it. Let's wait and see. Yeah, ruled a hit. On the lefty, Brooks. No, oh, excuse me. Tolano. Well, Tolano had been he had started the game, and now he is at second base. Pitch is on the corner for strike one. Runner on first base. Let's see if they had a courtesy runner. It looks like they did. I don't think that's Tate Miller that's running. But 
Most likely they brought in a courtesy runner. Can't quite make out the number. But Brennan Talano. Shows Bunt, lays it down the third base side, and it is run a roll foul. An 0 2 count. And Talano. Rupert's don't want to give up anything here. Don't make it as easy on yourself as you can there in the bottom half of the inning. They already trailed it by two. Ball's hit to second base. Rigby will get it and only have to go to one. Kind of kind of not able to get the handle on it there. So fielder's choice sends the runner to second base. Yeah, Rigby got to it, had a little trouble kind of exchange from glove to hand. And so the only play was going to be at first. So there's one out. And Jalen James, the lefty left fielder, will dig in. He has to dug out of the way of that one. It was high and inside ball one. Wind has died down a little bit, but not much. I mean, it's still got that flag standing out there in center field waving. We're going to look back at second. Pitch way out. Stopped up by Kewen nicely. Two balls, no strikes. Oh, McGee and Kewen, maybe not on the same Page there. Now we're ready. Outside corner fast ball called strike one. Two and one the count. Tillman out at second. Good. Holding the runner on. Ball three. 3-1. Okay, I never gave you the Arkansas Mid-South mascot. I think I gave you plenty of time to weigh in on it. <laughs> so I told you that Andrew Mansell had a basketball offer from Arkansas Mid-South. Very close relative of the Whippet, the Greyhounds. Fastball right down the corner. Right down the middle, I should say, for strike two to make the count full. Yeah, Arkansas, Mid-South, the, the Greyhounds out of West Memphis, Arkansas. Division two team offering Mansell the basketball scholarship. It's a payoff pitch. Hit hard, but hit foul back over the batting cage off to the left side. Whippets trying to bounce back after a loss earlier in the week, a 5-3 to three loss to Eupora as Baird Kewen calls for time. He'll walk out and speak to his pitcher, Aiden Howard. Yeah, next week we've got a couple of games for you in Basel Media Sports. We'll give you the two games against Louisville at Louisville on Tuesday and then home against Louisville on Thursday. Have that Tuesday-Thursday matchup because next week is Easter. You always have the Tuesday, Thursday to keep from having to play on Good Friday. But Tuesday over in Winston County, Thursday here at the home ballpark. Three two pitch, got him to chase a high fast ball for strike three. That's the third strikeout of the ball game for Aiden Howard. Howard, or I should say the strikeouts brought to you by the Tala County Farm Bureau, the number nine hitter Jack Hood digging in at the plate. He had a single his last at bat. He reached an error in the fourth, struck out 
in the second inning. Two down now. Strike one, fast ball right down Main Street. Wigan strike two. Howard got to chase one out of the zone. A little breaking ball there. Puts a strike away from getting out of the inning if you're wondering what the Whippets are bringing up. To the home frame of the inning. It'll be eight, nine, and one. There's a called strike three. Oh, the... Two strikeouts to end the inning. It's four in the game for Aiden Howard. And they are retired on the Chargers. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Whippets need to find a way to get two runs. We're back after this break here on Boswell Media Sports. Mornings at Wendy's are pretty sweet. Our homestyle French toast sticks, honey butter chicken biscuit, or maple bacon chicken croissant are so much more than just savory. That sweet, sweet syrup, perfect for dipping or drizzling. And that sweet honey butter, oh, it's that kind of breakfast. With our homestyle French toast sticks, honey butter chicken biscuit, or maple bacon chicken croissant, waking up has never been sweeter. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Breakfast. At participating U.S. Wendy's during breakfast hours. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson or Bradley Tyler at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. It's the bottom of the seventh inning. Kosciuszko trailing it by two. Got to find a way to get up two runs. Seven to five. Choctaw County is in the lead. The Whippets will send eight, nine, and one to the plate. Now that is scheduled to be Rusco, Rigby, and Mansell. If there's no, no pinch hitters or anything like that. And it looks indeed look like Rusco will lead things off. Rusco has a hit today and a run driven in. He's got a single. Back in the third, he's reached base twice. He was hit, hit, by, hit by a pitch in the second inning. It's still Ricardo on the mound for Choctaw County. First pitch to Rusco is a ball outside. So you got the lefty, lefty-righty matchup here. It's the left-handed hitting Rusco. He looks at, a, looks at another one outside for ball two. Rusco takes that one as Ricardo took a little bit off of a little off speed there and found the strike zone. Uh, Whippets love some of the, these guys to get on. He got some speed right here. Low in the dirt. Ball three. Three balls, one strike to count. Jonathan Ricardo is on in relief of Robbie Curtis. Ball four, and the Whippets have a leadoff walk. Exactly what they need. Braden Rigby step into the plate. Let's see, how many times is that today? That's four times today that the Whippets leadoff batter in the inning has been walked. Oh, Tillman, I should say Ben Tillman, the head coach, not Ryan Tillman for Kosciuszko. Ben Tillman, the head coach of the Choctaw County Chargers is gonna make a call to the bullpen. And the bullpen is coming from third base, I believe. So Ricardo goes out. We're going to step aside for a pitching change break. Central tire service pitching change timeout. Whippets have a runner on first base. Braden Rigby at the plate is the tying run. We're back in 60 seconds. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, 
Southern Point and Strut and Cotton t-shirts and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served to you daily at the drive-thru at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive-thru. Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Memorial Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Pitching change timeouts are brought to you by Central Tire Service, and it is Jack Hood, the shortstop, coming in to pitch for the Choctaw County Chargers. Let's see. I we don't have the book on Ricardo. He just pitched the one inning. He didn't give up anything, I don't think. No. He gave up no runs, no hits, no strikeouts. Uh, nobody walked. He hit one better. So that there it is. Okay, I didn't give our defensive changes here. Talano goes to shortstop and... It is Seth Miller coming to second base, and I guess that's Bruce going back into right field. So get all these sorted out. But I do know that Talano did go to shortstop. And then you got Seth Miller at second. And I'm going to, have to get out the binoculars to see who that is in right field. But something uh, is going to be, I believe that is Bruce out in right field. Yeah, Bruce goes back to right field where he started the game. Yeah, the umpire came and talked to Hood. He had something hanging out or something like that. He had to take off his person. So that's what the delay was there. But first pitch to Braden Rigby is... Down and in the dirt for ball one. Whippets are trailing at seven to five and are bottom of the seventh inning. Rigby represents a tying run. He looks at ball two, another throw down, and Rusco is back. So Whippets have Rusco at first, Braden Rigby at the plate. We had some sort of stoppage there. I believe Rusco called for time, and he was trying to stand up. They let him tuck his shirt in. Pop up, left side of the infield, sky high. Talano coming over and can't make the catch. But it ends up, actually ends up being an out anyway as Rusco was not running on the pop up. So it actually ends up working better for Choctaw County. Now they get the lead runner. So you call that E6, but they get the out as Andrew Mansell is at the plate. Mansell today is 0 oh, for 2. He's got two walks. He scored a run, or he drove in a run on a sacrifice, struck out his last time in the fifth. Well, he represents the tie and run. But it's been without their star hitter today, Benny Powell. They really felt the loss there. Quick throw over to first, and Rigby's back in time. But yeah, Benny Powell was in the lineup until right before we went on the air. He was scheduled to bat third, play center field, and then we got the note that. He was not available. So, yeah, that's a tough break for the Whippets. High and inside. Ball two to Mansell. But yeah, you missed that uh, Powell. You see it scrolling across the bottom of your screen. 
A 405 hitter. Leads the team in hits, runs, doubles. I mean, that's when you're losing out of your lineup as Mansell looks at ball three. It's Jack Hood on in relief. He's trying to close things out for Choctaw County as they lead Kosciuszko by two. And you get a ball four chant. And there's Mansell. Mansell taking it all the way. Three balls, one strike. High ball four. So the Whippets have the tying run on base at first. Braxton Smith coming in. Braxton Smith today is 0 for 3. It's a couple of pop-ups. Infield's going to come in, or at least McCulloch over at first base is going to come in and play on the grass. You got the middle infield kind of back at double play depth. Curveball barely makes it to the plate, ball one. Braxton Smith, the righty is Hood shakes off a couple of signs from Tate Miller. Now he's got the one that he wants. They'll look at strike one. It's a fast ball. We'll just say on the far outside corner. Even the count at one and one. Fast ball just comes right after him, does Hood. Smith can't figure it, can't catch up to it. No, oh, it's one ball and two strikes. Hope it's that beard Kewen waiting in the wings on deck. Curveball stays up just a little bit, a hair up. Good, good movement on that one. But that one was a little high, a little elevated. I'll tell you, Hood, that Hood doesn't take a lot of time. Working from the stretch here, 2-1. That's going to be a blooper into right field. It gets down. They're going to send Rigby home. Throw's not going to be in time. Mansell going to hook it over to third base. Big, big hit there by Braxton Smith. As the tying run is just now 90 feet away. Braden Rigby coming around to score. And you got Baird Kewen, whipping the catcher. Today he's been hit by a pitch. He struck out. He drove in a run on a sacrifice fly. Oh, the Whippets would love another deep sacrifice fly right here. Smith is way off the bag. There's a throw back into the field. It's going to get away from the third baseman. And the run's going to come home to tie. There it is. Miller popped up the throw to third. And Tuck couldn't come up with it. So we are tied at seven. The pitch was a strike. But yes, Braxton Smith wasn't being held on, so he was just walking off the bag, and he was going to second the whole way. The Whippets have tied it up. That pitch comes in and hits Hewitt on the elbow. Some Hewitt, the second at bat in a row. He's been hit by a pitch. And he'll get a courtesy runner. It's Bradley Goss and Bailey Powers steps in. So Bailey Powers will step in after we have a visit to the mound. So setting the scene for you. The Whippets have plated two runs. There's only one out. Runners on first and second. And Bailey Powers, the Whippets designated hitter, is at the plate. You got Braxton Smith, the winning run at second base. Yeah, on that throw down, Mansell looks at, uh, or should say Miller, throws down to third, and Tuck just couldn't 
couldn't come away with it. So we got a we got a pinch runner out at second base. I believe that's Kenyon Weatherby coming in to run out at second base. So they got Weatherby getting a little bit more speed on the base pass. He'll run for Braxton Smith. Bailey Powers at the plate. First pitch is a called strike on the inside corner, low and in the inside corner. So that's a fastball. Just challenging in the hitter there. One, no balls, two strikes to count the powers. Ball's popped up. That's an infield fly. That's infield fly. So, two down. And Holden McGee stepping in. The last hope for the Whippets here in the bottom of the seventh. Let's see, McGee today does have a hit. He's got a single, and he reached on a walk in the third. He reached on an error in the fourth. He's been on base three times. Curve ball stays high. Ball one. Whippets need a ball through the infield. Runner on second base. It's tied at seven, bottom of the seventh. Need anything through the infield. Rutherby takes off for third. And he'll get over to third. The double steal, actually it was a hit and run as McGee just threw the bat out there. That's exactly what that was, but no. now the Whippets have a, a game-winning run just 90 feet away. Yeah. McGee swings, can't figure that out. It's a ball dropping that pitch. One ball, two strikes to count. It's down to their final strike here, but they have tied the game. And the chant coming from the dugout. The pitch is off the plate, ball two. Yeah, you can see Tate Miller looking over to his dugout saying, eh, didn't miss by much. He kind of held up the, the two finger, the finger and the thumb there, so he didn't miss. McGee swings at the high fast ball, and that is it. That's the first strike out of the game for Hood. But the Whippets do tie the game. They get two runs on, was it just one hit? Yeah, one hit. There was one error and two left on base. We got free baseball there from Gaziesco. Go to the top of the eighth inning. We're tied at seven. When handling your finances, trust the expert staff at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan, Tammy Irving, and staff are here to help their clients achieve financial success and ease your mind when it comes to financial questions for business and personal. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford offers QuickBooks online hosting solutions, payroll, and direct deposits. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford, leading our clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street, Kosciuszko. This is physical therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapist Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden. Transforming lives spiritually and physically. Reliant Physical Therapy in Meg's Plaza on Veterans Memorial Drive, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. They couldn't settle this one in regulation. So we got a couple of extra innings here for the Kosciuszko Whippets and the Chargers of Choctaw County. Top of the eighth, 7-7. Seven seven. It will be the top of the order coming to the plate for the Chargers. One, two, and three. Lawson Stevens, Jeremiah Miller, and then Seth Miller. It's Aiden Howard still in the ballgame pitching for Kosciuszko.
Curve ball, strike one to Stevens. Stevens today is 0 for 3. He did make it on base on an error. A little pop up on the infield, jammed him, and Ryan Tillman will step back into the grass at shortstop and pull it in for out number one. Batting number two, Jeremiah Miller. Jeremiah Miller stepping in. He is the center fielder Miller. We got a second base Miller. We got a catcher Miller. Let's see. He uh, he reached base on a walk in the sixth. Came or uh, and singled in the fifth. First pitch to him is a ball. Eighth innings for Whippet baseball. I guess they're going to be brought to you by the Breakfast Show. Pop up high in the air, behind home plate. It is Kewen giving chase and then gets out of play. Yeah, that one stayed up and Kewen and Howard and McGee all gave chase, but just out of the behind the screen, behind home plate. 1-1 one, one count to Jeremiah Miller, the center fielder. Curve ball, good looking pitch there to find the strike zone for strike two. Gotta say congratulations to Coach Cole McBride for being selected as a all-star coach for Mississippi Association of Coaches 3A, 4A all-star game. As Jeremiah Miller reaches out and fouls that one back out over our head. Going to be coaching the North squad in the 3A, 4A game. Those will be on over into late May. Howard jams him again, and Miller fouls it off. And it came in inside. An update on Whippet softball. They get the win over to Soto Central. They move to nine and four on the season at 13 to seven. They split the series down in Flowood today. Low one in the dirt for ball two to even the count up. Now Lady Whippets lost to Northwest Rankin 10 to nothing and then beat DeSoto Central 13 to 7. And it's a called strike three on the inside corner. Strikeouts brought to you by the Tally County Farm Bureau. That's the fifth strikeout of the game for Aiden Howard. And now the other Miller, or one of the other Millers comes to the plate. That'll be Seth Miller. The second baseman. Well, he's back playing second. He had played all over. He played right field in the game. First pitch swinging. It was fouled off. And Whippets will have, what do we have coming up? Six, seven, and eight due up in the bottom of the inning. Curve ball once again finds the strike zone for strike two. Swing and strike three. That's the sixth strikeout of the game for Aiden Howard. And for the first time this afternoon, the Whippets have a one, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Go to the bottom of the eighth inning, tied at seven. Come on home to Abbott's Furniture and Appliance. Come on home. Come on home. 
This tax season, shop local. Shop at Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Ashley Furniture, Homestretch, Serta, and Sealy Bedding. Allen's also has GE Appliances and the best washer and dryer on the market. Speed Queen. Shop at home. Shop Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Kosciuszko and Durant. Come on home. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937. An equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. As we get ready to start tonight's or this afternoon's fourth or eighth inning, whatever inning it is, I've been here all day. We got number four, Jalen James, coming in to pitch. Whippets have the game tied seven to seven. So Jalen James. Will step in, in relief of uh, Hood. So, the Whippets have Aiden Howard coming to the plate. Let's see, Howard, Tillman, and Rusko, that's the, who would normally be there. But Jayla James coming in, the left-hander to pitch to uh, the Whippet lineup. Did not see... Who moved out to left field? Yeah, can't give you that at this point. But anyway, the Whippets uh, were trying to walk this one off. 7-7. Seven to seven. They tied it in the bottom of the seventh inning. And uh, Aiden Howard able to get the Choctaw County Chargers to go down in order in the top frame of the inning. The Whippets just need one run here. So you need to get a, get a runner on, and then you get the old bottom over, and then you'll... Well, trying to get them, move them home. Let's see, Tuck still playing. Now uh, no. Hood goes to third base. Talano still at shortstop. I'm guessing that that's probably Tuck, who just went back from third base out to left field. That's what I'm going to assume. Can't quite see. So Hood over at third, and then Tuck out at left field. Oh, first pitch from the lefty. James is a ball to Aiden Howard, well out of the zone. He's got a big kick. There's an off-speed pitch that's called a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. And one hit down the line. It is foul. Well, foul ball. That one was close. I didn't see the – I couldn't quite tell you the – Split of the window between the two window panes is right in my line of sight on that right side. So I couldn't tell you where it went. But anyway, it's going to be called a strike. One ball, two strikes. Just a long foul ball down the first baseline. Kick and deliver way outside for ball two. Yeah, Jalen James, the lefty. Like I said, he's he's got a, a big high kick when it comes yeah, working from the stretch, even with nobody on base. Ball's hit into left field. Tuck drifting back. We'll sit down on it and make the catch out in left field for the out. Looked like he didn't really have a good read on it, but he ends up making the catch anyway. First out is recorded, and Ryan Tillman steps in. Tillman reached base three times. Uh, 
First pitch swing and is hit high in the air. Coming on from center field to make the catch is Jeremiah Miller. So just like that, two outs in the inning. And it's John Wyatt Rusco. Hey, Rusco was the one that got the, the big hitting started for the Whippets in the seventh, where he led off with a, with a walk. Well, then you got the lefty-lefty matchup. With the lefty Rusco standing in. And look at one low for ball one. It's down to their foot. Pitch catches the corner for strike one. Evening up the count at one and one. Way outside, ball two. Two balls, one strike to count to John White Rusco. He's the number eight hitter. Yet Braden Rigby, then we go back to the top of the order for Kosciuszko. Knotted up at seven. Way outside, ball three. Three and one count to Rusco. Ball four, Chant. That one's low in the dirt. Four ball four. It's a two out walk. Whippet still got a little life left in him. But Braden Rigby, the freshman coming to the plate. Rigby reached on an error in the seventh inning. Come around to score. Yeah, it was a pop up on the infield. Had a runner on first. And the uh, infielder dropped the pop up. But they were still able to get the one out because obviously the runner at first was not moving to second. So they were able to throw over second and get the out. But. Still went down as an error. There's a throw over. It rolls away from McCulloch at first. They had a they had Rusco lean in a little bit, but luckily for the whip, it the throw was high. So McCulloch had to try to jump up and get it. So Rusco. It's a decent lead. First pitch well high for ball one. If it's the top of the order on deck, if Rigby's able to, to extend this inning, go ahead, run over at first base is John Wyatt Rusco. Fast ball right down the middle. Even the count up at one and one. Rigby shows bunt, lays it down the third baseline. It's going to roll foul. Not well, a bad idea there by Rigby, but it just rolled a little bit too far to the left side. As he's got the speed, he can leg out or bunt like that. But now you're down to one strike left. Whoops. Got it tied up at seven. Runner takes off. Here's the throw down well out into center field. Miller's throw well out of the reach of, I believe, Tolano was the one covering the bag. So you got runner at second base in scoring position. Two balls and two strikes the count. Anything through the infield probably wins the game. Fastball high, count goes full. You got a big gap on the right side of the field, a big gap out in right center. 3-2, that's hit into left center field. Is anybody gonna get to it? He does. <laughs> Jeremiah Miller on his horse, able to get to it. I thought that could have been the game, but Miller tracks it down and will go to the ninth inning. Still tied at seven. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as the local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto. 
which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise. A promise to take care of the ones you love, no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. We're still tied up at seven here as we start the top of the ninth inning. Three, uh, excuse me, four, five, and six coming to the plate for the Choctaw County Chargers. That'll be Caleb McCulloch to lead things off. He's let's see, he's playing first base right now, starting the game over at third. Aiden Howard still on in relief. He's got a couple of shoes. He's six. I got six strikeouts for Aiden Howard. McCulloch stepping in. Looks at strike one. Curveball strike one. McCulloch struck out his last at bat. Uh, ball's hit hard in the left field, but John White Rusco is right there to make the catch. Good defense out there. Had him shaded just right. First out of the inning. We got a pinch hitter in the ball game. I'll try to give you a name. I have Dallas Christensen stepping in. Popped it up. Giving chase behind the plate is Kewen. He'll make the catch. Two down in the inning. So Christensen with the pop-up. He was batting in place of Ricardo. Now batting number 27, Tate Miller. So that'll be up to Tate Miller to try to keep things going for the Chargers. The catcher, he had a single in his last at bat, like in the seventh inning. First pitch swinging, hit to third. McGee will fire across, and not in time. Well, it was in time, but it was a low throw over to first base. And Smith couldn't pick it up out of the dirt. We're going to have a courtesy runner. Yep, we're going to have a courtesy runner. So they'll say error. And stepping in is Talano. Ball's popped up in the outfield. Andrew Mansell running to his right will make the catch and end the inning. So the error doesn't come back to bite the whippets. No runs. No hits, one error, one left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning, still tied at seven. The shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage, or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem. You need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency in Kosciuszko, knowing the customer and their individual needs is what we pride ourselves on. 
We know how important it is for everyone to have the peace of mind that your insurance coverages are tailored for you. Our team recognizes your life and your unique needs. That is why we provide you with numerous insurance options, an easy claim process, and personal attention that is second to none, all at one location without breaking the bank. Call us today at 662-289-1024 or visit us at 235 North Madison Street off the square in Kosciuszko. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency, we guarantee the right fit for you and all of your insurance needs. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the ninth inning. The Whippets will send the top of the order. One, two, and three to the plate to try to uh, close out this one as we're tied at seven between Kosciuszko and Choctaw County. The Whippets were able to tie it there in the bottom of the seventh inning. It was a big uh, what was it, a big sixth inning for the Chargers as they went four runs across the plate to make it seven to five in the top of the sixth. The Whippets were down to their uh, final three outs. They were able to get two across and tie it up at seven apiece. Jalen James is still in the game for the Choctaw County Chargers as he pitched that last inning. So Mansell will lead things off. Mansell has been a money baller today. He has walked four times. What's the it, is is that the platinum sombrero? Golden sombrero is if you strike out four times. What if you walk four times? That's got to be something. But he shows butt right there. He pulls it back because it's low and inside. Let's see, this is the fifth pitcher. James is the fifth pitcher that the Choctaw County Chargers have used. Mansell going to lay the bunt down off to the right side of the mound and a great play by James. He just scoops it up with his glove and uh, tosses it across to McCulloch for the first out. But yeah, that was a good defensive play by James. Braxton Smith coming to the plate. Smith had the big hit in the seventh inning. That helped the Whippets cut into the lead. Fast ball, strike one. Yeah, Brennan Tolano, Robbie Curtis, Jonathan Ricardo, Jackson Hood, Braxton Smith swings behind the fastball. And Jalen James, those are your pitchers. Off-speed breaking ball. It's barely makes it to the plate. One ball, two strikes. We hit the three-hour mark of this one. Our first pitch was at 3.01. We're at a 6.04 right now. That one's up high and hits Smith in the arm. That could be big. I'll bring up Baird Kewen. Now batting number seven, Baird Kewen. Baird Kewen. He's going to need some. Re- he's going to need some reliant physical therapy as Baird Kewen. He's been hit by three pitches. The last three times he's been at the plate. He also drove in a run on a sack fly and struck out. First pitch is fouled off. Whippets don't want him to get hit. I mean, they'll take it if he gets hit by a pitch right here, but they they definitely want Kewen swinging away. Quick throw to first is going to get away from McCulloch. Smith is going to get to second base. Probably could have gone to third. Yeah, that throw gets away from McCulloch over at first base, and Smith hoofs it down to second. He probably could have gone to third as the ball came off the side wall a little quickly, and McCulloch didn't play it very well. Kind of got away from him. So Smith probably could have gone over to third base, but hey, as it is, the Whippets have a runner in scoring position. Pitches high outside off the plate. 
Ball one. Even up the count. One and one. Kewen pops that one foul out towards the softball field. Stay level, fellas. Come on. Stay level. Oh. One ball, two strikes to Beard Kewen. There's the throw. There's an excuse me swing, but Kewen able to catch a piece of it. Came up and in and more of a self-defense swing than anything. But Kewen was able to at least make contact with it, stay alive at the plate. If you're just now tuning in, Whippets and the Chargers are tied at seven in extra innings, bottom of the ninth. Hit hard, but foul. Pulled it down the third baseline. Also, if you're just now tuning in, the Whippets have been without Benny Powell. Right up until the game time, he was in the lineup, and then we're told that he was not available. Whippets haven't had their leading hitter. It's, a, it's an over 400 batter. Swing and strike three. James got Kewen to chase one outside. That's the first strike out of the game for James. That will be Bailey Powers stepping in. Powers, he singled in the fourth. He popped into an infield fly situation back in the seventh. I think Braxton Smith probably going to move the third very quickly. Fast ball outside for ball one. James digging in with that high kick. If you're watching on the Island's Furniture video stream, you can see it. Now he turns around and looks Braxton Smith back to second base. Up the middle, you got Brendan Tolano and Seth Miller. Tolano started the game as your pitcher. Seth Miller's played every position on the field except for hot dog vendor today. He's played all over. Little slow roller to the right side. Seth Miller sits on it. Will throw, and there is the outs recorded. 4 3. Whippets get a runner on. Cannot move him home. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. We're going to go to the 10th inning. Kosciuszko in Choctaw County still tied up at seven. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. Boswell Media Sports. It is the top of the 10th inning. Yeah, you heard that right. Top of the 10th inning here from the Itala County Fairgrounds as Kosciuszko and Choctaw County are knotted up at seven apiece. So, Aiden Howard still on the mound for the Whippets. It should be eight, nine, and one due up for Choctaw County. That would be Jalen James, Jack Hood, and Lawson Stevens if everything stays as it has been. Well, we got to flip over and get us a, a whole new sheet going on here. Oh. Whippets will have, let's see. 
Aiden Howard on the mound. Baird Kewen behind the plate. Holden McGee at third. Braxton Smith at first up the middle. It is Tillman at short. Rigby at second. Left to right in the outfield. It's Rusco, Mansell, and Reggie Carter. Jalen James, the lefty, will step in. He is one for four. He struck out in the seventh inning. He, his only hit came back in the second when he had a single. First pitch shows Bunt, lays it down the third baseline. McGee makes a smart move to let it go foul. Good job by McGee there. It's just a long strike. So strike one to James. Yeah, that's a great bunt. As he pushed it down third baseline, McGee's charging and then last second let it roll and it eventually rolled foul. So, yeah, really good decision there by McGee. Just high for ball one. One ball, one strike. Aiden Howard winds, or should say throws to the plate because that one is outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Let's see, he is the third pitcher that the Whippets have used today. Pitch just a little bit low and inside, I guess. Three balls, one strike. Three one count to Raylan James, the pitcher. Howard walks him to start the tenth inning. A runner on first base. Now batting number five, Jack Hood. James is going to get a no. He's going to run for himself. He's yeah. Jack Hood steps in. May end up seeing the, the bunt here. Those are going to have a visit to the mound. And Coach Dew come out and bring its infield in. And go over some situational awareness right here. That's right, Choctaw County with a runner on first base. And Jack Hood, the number nine hitter. Jack Hood today has got a couple of strikeouts. He reached an error in the fourth, and he had a single in the sixth inning. So Coach Dew, the entire infield in. Let's see the Whippets. Got four innings of work from Holden McGee, two and a third from Braden Rigby, and Howard still on the mound. Officially, they have Howard with four strikeouts. I have him with six, so one of us can't count. Might be me, but I have him with six strikeouts. But anyway, it's Jack Hood stepping in. Hood's got some innings on the mound, or got a inning on the mound for, an inning on the mound for the Chargers. He does indeed show butt. It's Howard. They're going to try to go to second, and there is safe at second as there is a collision out at second base. Howard trying to go to second and it pulled Rigby off the bag and then on the slide it looked like Rigby's hand collided with the helmet of the runner. So he is he is down and in pain out at second base so we'll step aside for a Injury time out. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. 
Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Braden Rigby still being tended to out at second base. And it looks like he might come out of the game. Well, looks like he will indeed come out of the game. So I we'll have to wait and see what we're going to do defensively. But, yeah, what, what happened there was uh, the Whippets had already decided on a bunt that they were going to go to second. So Howard uh, comes in E. He comes in and throws uh, down to second base. And uh, the throw was to the right side of the bag a little bit. So Rigby has to come off the bag and uh, try to catch it. And when he does that, the slide uh, kind of momentum takes the, makes the players collide. And it looked like the hand might have gotten jammed or, uh, there, something along uh, those lines. But hopefully uh, Rigby is uh, okay and it's nothing too serious. But – Whippets are going to make a change while we're here, and it is going to be Benny Powell coming in to pitch. So uh, Benny Powell uh, is going to come on. I guess I would assume that Holden McGee is going to go back to second. Aiden Howard is going to go to third. And Benny Powell is going to be on the uh, on the mound. So that's what it looks like. Can't close the book on Howard just yet as the runners on first and second would be his uh, responsibility. So, Powell, let's see what they ruled. That. So. Since we had already taken our timeout, that was the Central Tire Service pitching change update. We'll say that, not a timeout. As uh, Benny Powell coming on to pitch and try to get the whippets out of a jam right here. The jam of all jams. Runners on first and second tie ball game top of the 10th inning. We... Whippets today have used, let's see, this would be the fourth pitcher on the afternoon. Holden McGee, Braden Rigby, Aiden Howard, and Benny Powell. I think half the team is thrown for Choctaw County. So one, two, three, four, five. They've used five or six. Number 11, Benny Powell. Benny Powell. He was, he was not available for the game. He banged up a little bit or something maybe in pregame. Looks like maybe they've worked out whatever the the injury issue was as he's not played today. So if you're just now maybe tuning in and wondering why Powell hasn't played, well, he was in the lineup, and then they took him out. They brought the lineup, and right before we, literally right before we hit go on the air, they said Powell was not available. And then there's a bunt shown by Lawson Stevens, but it's up high for ball one. Choctaw County doing the small ball right here all the way. I'm trying to get that runner over to third base. Whip it defense into the shift. There's the throw to third. And nobody there. Nobody home. Smith comes up and goes to third. And J James, who's a fast runner, is able to get there. So that is a bunch single back to back. And they're loaded for Jeremiah Miller, the center fielder. And that one's hit to left field. It's going to get down in front of Rusco. Only throw is going to be home, and it's not in time. 
But that will break the tie. Eight to seven. Everybody going to be safe. Still nobody out, and the bases are loaded. So Jeremiah Miller with the single and an RBI. And Seth Miller, the second baseman coming in. He hits one into right field. Reggie Carter's going to have to let it drop in front of him. And there's another hit. Back, that's four in a row. Still going to be loaded. Still going to be nobody out. And Caleb McCulloch stepping in. McCulloch today is one for five. And he's got a home run, and that's it. A couple of pop-ups and a strikeout. Curveball, strike one to McCulloch. Nine to seven, Choctaw County in the lead. Fastball, strike two. Well, oh and two the count to McCulloch. He chased one and was able to stay alive but way out in front of it. Fouls it off to the left side. We got Mansell playing shaded a little bit to the left, not playing straight away in center. Hard hit ball that's going to be foul. Drifted out past the dugout down in the first base line. Defense in on the grass. That one's hit down the line through the gap at second base, or I should say third base, and it's another single and another run scored. So that is 10 to 7. Still nobody out, and I think that's Dallas Christensen. That is Christensen coming to the plate. Christensen's only batted once. There was a pop-up into foul territory that was caught. So Christensen. There's time called as Braxton Smith. I'm going to go out and talk to Benny Powell on the mound. The meeting is over, and Powell will toe the rubber, working from the wind-up with the bases full of chargers. Christensen swings, fouls it off. Oh, and one. Oh, one pitch. Swinging strike two. Yeah, they didn't really, didn't really look comfortable there, did Christensen. Oh, Powell into the wind up. Fastball low. One ball, two strikes. Swing and strike three. Uh, tipped it into the glove of Baird Kewen. Whippets needed that. First out of the game. We'll have Tate Miller. I should say first out of the inning. Tate Miller, the catcher, stepping in. Miller is one for four today. And that pitch bounces in front of the plate. Let's see. Tate Miller's single to lead off the seventh. Reached an error in the ninth. Other than that, he has two uh, pop-ups. 
foul balls. Or I should say two fly ball pop-ups. Well, the umpires are going to meet it by the mound. Not sure what this is about. On the plate, umpire shakes his head. It's something. So Coach McBride or somebody with a whip it's dugout must have asked them to go confer. I'm not sure what they would be conferring about. But anyway, it's 1-0 the count to Tate Miller. Swinging strike one. A fastball there from Benny Powell. Well, that's a curveball that hung up in the air for a long time. But Miller chops at it and fouls it off. Well, Powell throws, and that one's fouled off the face mask of Baird Kewen. Kewen's all right, seems. So the umpire is going to give him a. <coughs> umpire is going to give him a little bit, but Kewen shakes it off, says that he's okay. And now he'll try to block that setting sun out in left field to get a pitch call from his dugout. Yep. That's a swing. Swing and strike three, the second straight strikeout for Benny Powell, and two down in the inning now, and it's. Brennan Tolano will step in. Tolano is 0 for 3. He didn't bat one of those times around. In the seventh inning, he did not bat as it was a pinch hitter. Staten pinch hit. And first pitch is up. Out of the zone, ball one. Curve ball comes back and finds the zone for strike one. Even up the count at one and one. That's ball high upstairs, ball two. Well, he honored the 1974 state championship baseball team before the game today. Swinging strike two. Those guys left here and went downtown to eat. They could, might be able to come back. Catch the end of the ball game. Two-two pitch. Inside corner called strike three and the whippets. In the inning, but not before the Choctaw County Chargers get three runs on four hit, five hits. No errors and three left on base. To the bottom of the 10th inning we go. Kosciuszko trails at 10 to 7. When handling your finances, trust the expert staff at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan, Tammy Irving, and staff are here to help their clients achieve financial success and ease your mind when it comes to financial questions for business and personal. Watkins Ward and Stafford offers QuickBooks online hosting solutions, payroll, and direct deposits. Watkins Ward and Stafford, leading our clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street, Kosciuszko. This is physical therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. 
When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapists Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden. Transforming lives spiritually and physically. Reliant Physical Therapy in Meg's Plaza on Veterans Memorial Drive, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the 10th inning, Kosciuszko trails it by three. Can they do it again? They trailed it by two in the bottom of the 7th inning. They're able to come back and tie it and send it into extra innings. But right now, it's a tall task. It'll be up to Holden McGee, the number five hitter for the Whippets, to get things started. McGee today. Is one for four. A single and a walk and a run scored. Struck out his last at bat in the seventh inning. And it's Jalen James still on the pitch. Outside. For ball one. Holden McGee takes one up and in. So the Whippets will have a base runner. That's a good way to start if you're Kosciuszko. Oh, Aiden Howard, the Whippets pitcher. Well, was the pitcher. Howard and Tate Miller got tangled up while they were. Oh, uh, Howard was walking to the plate. They got Something got tangled up between equipment, so Miller's got to walk over and get hit his chest plate adjusted. Yeah, yeah, something, something happened. But Miller's back. He's ready to go. Whippets have a runner on first base. Bunts don't necessarily help you in this situation anymore. Whippets... Uh, Howard looks at ball one outside. Howard today, he's got a single reached on the, in the sixth on a hit-by-pitch. Other than that, a couple of pop-outs and a strikeout. James throws over to first, and McGee is back. No tag. So, James working from the stretch, looks over at first. Fastball, called strike, outside corner. Lefty-lefty matchup here with Aiden Howard. We'll get another lefty coming up, possibly in this inning, if the Whippets get it down to John White Rusko coming to the plate. Outside, ball two, and... Holden McGee thought about getting over to second, but then thought better of it and had to dive back in under a tag as Tate Miller stopped that pitch from rolling to the backstop, fired up and threw it over to McCulloch, who's covering the bag at first. Outside, 3-1, and McGee's going to go down, and he is tagged out. Yeah. Now, that one was th thrown over to the side, and McGee is caught stealing out at second. Yeah, Miller had to go out way outside to get it, and then they kind of caught McGee out in no man's land. He had to go one way or the other, tried to go to second, but Tate Miller throws down for the – and then there's ball four. Oh. Oh. Oh, Whippets will have a runner on first base, but one out. Ryan Tillman steps in. Tillman reached on a walk in the second inning, singled in the third inning. Reached on an error. No, he flew out in the fourth, and then he didn't bat in the eighth inning. Excuse me, in the 
Sixth inning, he didn't bat. Jackson Schuler came in and batted for him. First pitch is a fastball outside corner. There we go. That one's fouled off to the right. Strike two. No balls, two strikes to count to Ryan Tillman. Up its need, base runner, shelling it by three. Outside, ball one. Let's see Tillman, the junior shortstop. That comes in and that hits him. So Whippets will send the tying run to the plate. It's John Wyatt Rusco. Rusco's been playing money ball today too. Out of the Five times he's been to the plate, he's been on base four of them. Hit by pitch, single, and then two walks. Rusco on the lefty, lefty, lefty look here. He looks at strike one. Bottom of the 10th inning. If you're just now tuning in, our game started at 3 o'clock. Didn't start at 1. Rusco looks at strike two, yeah. Started at 3, didn't start at 1. We're not going on five and a half hours here. They pushed the game back because of uh, the rain that moved to the area last night. Give the field a little time to improve the conditions. Rusco swings and comes up empty. Whippets are down to their final out. It'll be all up to the freshman. No, who is it going to be? Benny Powell. Oh, yeah, Benny Powell came in. So if you're anybody, if anybody you want at the plate, it's Benny. If He's not exactly at 100%, but that's who you want if you're the Whippets. He's a leading hitter on the team, a 405 hitter. It looks a fastball, strike one. So this will be Powell's first at bat of the afternoon. Swings over the top of that one. Little pitch down there, final strike. The contingent of fans from Ackerman. Excited off to our right. So Jalen James gets the signal, looks back at second, throws to the plate. It's a called strike three, and that will do it. The Choctaw County Chargers get the 10 to seven win over Kosciuszko after a 10 inning affair. A long, long ball game here today from the Itali County Fairgrounds. We are going to take a long extended break, wrap this one up. When we come back, we'll name our player of the game and give you some stats and try uh, to uh, give you the pitching stats and everything else. But Choctaw County gets the win 10-7. to And uh, we're back after this here in the Wendy's post-game show. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT. 
at Homes CC. No place like Homes. Homes Community College. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson or Bradley Tyler at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Wendy's without the Wendy's app is like nugs without the sauce. <gasps> or a Frosty without the fries. <gasps> or a hamburger without the fresh beef. No! Level A. Get the app to order ahead, order delivery, earn free food, and get app exclusive offers. One app, all the Wendy's. Offer for a limited time at participating Wendy's. Terms apply. App registration required. Fresh beef available in contiguous U.S., Alaska, and Canada. When handling your finances, trust the expert staff at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan, Tammy Irving, and staff are here to help their clients achieve financial success and ease your mind when it comes to financial questions for business and personal. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford offers QuickBooks online hosting solutions, payroll, and direct deposits. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford, leading our clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street, Kosciuszko. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served to you daily at the drive-thru at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive-thru. Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Memorial Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We know life has been busy and routines have changed for many. However, we do not want you to neglect your oral health. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Hello, this is Dr. Paul Gundy of Autumn Ridge Dental, and we salute the Kosciuszko Whippet Player of the Game. And now that's something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. This is the Wendy's Post Game Show. Kosciuszko falls to Choctaw County 10 to 7 here on a long, long 10 inning fair on a Saturday. Uh, ball game, a game that was uh, delayed two hours due to the weather that was uh, in the area yesterday, you know, kind of drenching the field. They let it air out a little bit this morning, but the Whippets fall 10-7. to seven. Uh, Taking a look at the, the pitching staff for both teams, Holden McGee goes four innings pitched to give up four hits, three runs, walked one, struck out two. Braden Rigby goes two and a third, gives up four hits, four runs, walks two, strikes out three. Aiden Howard, two and two-thirds innings pitch, did not give up a hit, uh, gave up just two runs, struck out six. And then Benny Powell goes the one inning, gives up three hits, uh, the one run, and strikes out three. So that's what it is there. And taking a look at Choctaw County, uh, Brandon Talano pitched two innings, gave up one hit, two runs, walked five, struck out six. 
Curtis, Robbie Curtis, walk, uh, went four innings, gave up five hits, three runs, walked two, struck out one. Ricardo, Jonathan Ricardo, uh, did not register an inning. Well, he should have pitched, I think well, it was one inning or point or one third of an inning, I believe. Uh, he gave up, walked one, and then he had Hood come in and he walked, uh, pitched one inning. He gave up one hit, two runs, walked one, struck out one, and he had James pitch two and two thirds. Uh, closed it out for the uh, Choctaw County Chargers. Uh, gave up, uh, or should walk two and struck out two. So that's what it looks like uh, offensively. The Whippets didn't. Nobody had multiple hit game, as you got hits from Braxton Smith. You also got a hit from Bailey Powers. You got a hit from Holden McGee, uh, Aiden Howard, Ryan Tillman got a hit. Ron, John White Rusco got a hit. Braden Rigby got a hit, but yeah, nobody with a multi-hit game for the uh, Whippets. But the uh, Choctaw County Chargers uh, got two on a home run in the first inning on a big home run by Caleb McCulloch. And uh, then, let's see, it was the sixth inning where the Chargers were able to put up four runs. That made it 7-5. to five. Whippets had to get two in the bottom of the seventh inning. They did that to force extra innings. And then it was the top of the tenth where the Chargers did all of their damage uh, coming in with five hits in a row, and that is the difference in the ballgame. 10-7, to seven, Choctaw County gets the win. Uh, looking at your Automers Dental Player of the Game, that's going to go to Aiden Howard, who uh, had some, uh, good innings on the mound for the Whippets with six strikeouts. And also at the plate, let's see, he uh, singled. Uh, was hit by a pitch and uh, walked. So he reached base three times. So Aiden Howard going to be your Autumn Rich Dental player of the game. we got to say thank you to uh, our guest, Gary Taylor, and Coach Ted Milton of the 1974 Kosciuszko Whippet uh, State Championship baseball team that was honored today. They were presented resolutions by the city of Kosciuszko, and they were here. I think they had 11 out of the 17 on that team that were able to uh, to make it uh, today. So Coach uh, Ted Milton of that squad and then Gary Taylor, who was on the, on the team, you were able to come up here and join us in the uh, fourth and fifth inning, so we appreciate them. Uh, thank you to Donald back at the studio, uh, keeping us on the air uh, today. Obviously, uh, you know, a long, long game. Uh, three hours and 40 minutes, I think that's what we clocked it as. And uh, so, uh, Donald, we appreciate you for uh, being at back there and keeping us uh, at the controls. Thank you to uh, Melissa, Ashley, uh, Laura, Lisa, BMO, everyone involved in Boston Media Sports, whether they do uh, graphics or do some production or do some uh, on the sales and ad sides, whatever it is. It's a, it's a team effort. Uh, we're going to be back with you on Tuesday. Whippets go on the road to take on the Louisville Wildcats. And uh, we're not sure if that could be a video broadcast. You kind of have to wait and see what the uh, the setup looks like. So we'll either way, we're going to have a radio broadcast for sure. But it's just when we get to the baseball field, depending on what the setup looks like and how much room they give us and other things out of our control. So just plan on being by your radio on Tuesday at six, uh, 7 o'clock for Whippets versus Wildcats. And then maybe, maybe you can get it on your phone and your tablet on the video stream. So, but we're going to sign on off uh, today, and uh, that's a long game. Whippets fall ten to seven. They got a rebound quickly though, because more division play coming up next week. So for our entire crew, Breck Riley signing.